acknowledgement. So if you feel comfortable or you're in a position to stare, you may. If not, feel comfortable. We acknowledge we are hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas, of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. Also, like to take a time to go through the code of conduct. Generally, we are all here as parents, staff, caregivers. We're here to have a meeting where we hear each other's voices, and we do so in a respectful manner. That pretty much is our code of conduct, giving the opportunity for everybody to speak and feel safe doing so. As well, um, I would like to also um, ask if anyone would like to disclose a code of a, a conflict of interest. Is anyone currently a PF member would like to at all acknowledge a, co a conflict of interest at all? Sharon, do we have anything in the chat? As we may have some people. No. What what we wanted to ask as well is for uh, did uh, everyone membership filled out um, that form? Um, declaration. Declaration form. So nothing so, in the chat is it. So we will be uh, giving an update on the form to explain what the form is, okay. and we'll okay. post it during our membership um, working Perfect. group update. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Um, and I can go over our meeting norms um, for those who are a bit newer to our, our meetings. So, right, um, um, Zina, just so, um, Manchu, can you please put, because our members can't see where we are in the agenda, are we able to put up the, for Zina? Thank you. So, let's keep, okay. All right, thank you. So, just remind everybody um, of our meeting norms. So, during the question comment period by PAC members, the following will occur. Rounds of questions or comments will be, will occur to allow all PIAC members to have an opportunity to ask questions, comment at least once. PIAC members are expected to keep their questions, comments as concise as possible to ensure all PIAC members have an opportunity to speak. Co-chairs will close questions, comment periods to ensure the meeting agenda is adhered to and indicate question comments that are pending at the close of the question period to be put into the chat or emailed to info at piac.com to be recorded as part of the minutes. For PIAC motions that do not involve amending bylaws, changed meeting procedures, or budget allocation, which are moved and seconded, the following steps will occur. The PIAC co-chair will ask if any PIAC members wish a recorded vote. If three or more PIAC members request a recorded vote, then a recorded vote will occur. For example, following the roll call voting procedure of calling on wards at a time for their vote. If less than three PIAC members request a recorded vote, the motion is considered passed by consensus. So what we're gonna ask for right now is the approval of consent of the consent agenda, as well as the agenda from December, the agenda and minutes from December 12th. I'm going to put forward that motion first. Do I have someone to second that? I'll second the motion, Board 11, Janice. Thank you. And now I'm going to open that up for some questions. Does anybody have any questions or comments to add to the agenda? Sharon, can I have you help me with the speakers list? Sorry, I was speaking, sorry about so far no one. I haven't seen no one's hands up, is it? Oh, I see um Andrew. Hi. Um there was a motion that was discussed at the uh consultation working group, and there was general agreement that the motion could be drafted and uh provided. I did submit it um yesterday to the two co chairs, uh, co leads. Uh, Sarah and Kadeen, and I don't see it included um, in the agenda. So I'm, I'm, I would like that either asked, um, added to the agenda as an amendment, or uh, understanding why it was uh, left off. Sorry. So Andrew, you, it, this has to come through one of the um, voting members, one of the core reps. 
So you'd have to ask one of the corps to speak on your behalf on this. Would any of our voting members like to ask that question to our consultation or have anything amended on this agenda? Sure, I can do that. It's Crystal from Ward 6. So I'll just say what he said. <laughs> oh, that's just... great. Good evening, everybody. Katie here. I guess I will um, come forward to comment. Um, and uh, yes, we had a conversation at the consultations. Uh, with a discussion to put the motion forward uh, at the request that Andrew would share with us the appropriate background documents and the proper motion uh, uh, upon receiving his follow-up, which was thorough and extensive. Thank you, Andrew, for that. There were some added additions or some additions to the recommendations that were outside of our discussion and our agreement for coming forward. And so I followed up and requested that and informed that the motion would be removed until we discuss further at next month's meeting. So it is not included for that reason. It did not flow through the report, although there is a notation there about the about the discussion in the report, but there is no formal motion on the table. So I uh, please advise what comes forward from this point. That's my, and if Sarah has any comments on that as well, I was waiting for Sarah's input as well. Thank you. Um, thank you, Kadeen. I'm just new to within the cold leads, so I think you have more knowledge on that. Um, but um, indicated, I, I thought we were gonna bring all of them, but of course, Okay, Dean, you have that. I'm new still until next meeting when it comes to that. It's okay with uh, Andrew to defer it until we meet up with the consultation team. I, I guess I have to. Um, it just, uh, again, as I all say to new members and everyone, there appears to be two sets of rules uh, depending on what type of member you are in this organization. Fair enough, duly noted from the colleague. Go ahead, Katie, if you want to say anything. Yeah, and uh, thank you for for preparing the work. My only concerns were about two of the, the recommendations that came through, forward through the motion that I prefer to have further conversation on. Um, and, uh, but again, I am also <laughs> just working with then what feels comfortable along with the processes that we've discussed and and how we're able to say hey what we take away and what we come back with um and so that is the only reason for that adjustment andrew and i attempted to try to start this conversation earlier today but i also know that we are um prevented based on our other you know our other obligations throughout the day to respond when it's timely so if it is a two year okay, we have our next consultations meeting at February 7th. It will absolutely be an, an agenda item on there for further uh, discussion for us to, to go forward with, especially if there is anything to clarify around the uh, the recommendations that came through that, your, uh, your proposal and briefing note. Okay, um, again, I so, um, personally hope uh, that- Zina, Zina. Yep. Are you able to continue and um, just speak to keep what Kadeen said because um, she's not, she's absolutely correct in what she's doing. Yeah. So go ahead and um, no, I mean, the role. We, it, in, in fair, when I articulate and sounds as though there was conversation uh, before this meeting. So thank you, Kadeen, for your follow up on that one, you and Sarah. And it looks like we're going to be having a motion come to us possibly in February. Thank you. Thank you, co-chairs. So at this point, um, hearing no other, we can 
move forward and have those accepted. Thank you. So now um, we're going to move on to a co-chair update. Sharon, would you like to speak to that one? Just because I've been speaking a lot so far this evening. <laughs> No, no, no problem. Um, I'll let you speak on the self evaluation, but I'll just do the co chair, uh, the PIAC um, chair report. So I would like to say Happy New Year and welcome back to all PIAC members Trustee Dovitis, Associate Director Ardley Salmon, Executive Superintendent Yutan Robinson Shirley Chan, and the PCCO team. We're looking forward to com continue working and collaborate, co collaborating with each of you during the 2023 school year. Um, the other one I would like to kind of highlight as um, a few things we're going to, I know the report is there, but just to reiterate, um, there was a, a TDSB 2024-2025 school year calendar committee um, on first uh, meeting on uh, Tuesday, January the 9th, where co-chair Zena Sherrick and Sharon Grant attended. And this is our first school year calendar committee meeting to discuss and review the proposed elementary and secondary 2024-2025 school year calendar. A uh, sequent meeting was held on Monday, January 15, 2024, uh, to further discuss and review the calen calendar before presenting to the board um, on January 31st for approval. We will provide an update on February on the February 2024 um, co-chair report at the PIAP meeting. Um, PIA co-representative orientation and strategic planning conversation was rescheduled. Um, and um, we, you know, we wanted to, we thought about safety, co-chair, uh, uh, Sherrick and I, we thought about safety and ensure that um, especially if members are bringing uh, young ones, um, you know, there was a storm warning and we didn't want to take that um, lightly. So it's been scheduled for January 20, 20th this um, Saturday from 10 to 3. And it's been hosted again by um, PIA co-chairs um, at Earl Hague Secondary School, which is 100 Princess Avenue. Um, if you all attend, then you'll have a, a good um, segue into when we have our events um, conference, which is the same place. This, I just want to um, highlight that um, this is one of the first time the co-chairs have taken the step to host um, something on uh, during the admin uh, process for our members because we felt it necessary to help support us all. Um, the orientation again uh, spoke about it in December, and it, it's in. We thought it was in order to bridge the gap and better understand what we the co the P, what the PR co representative role and responsibility is very important that all new and current members participate in an orientation being hosted by, again, PR co-chairs and supported by PCCO. So thank you, Michelle and team. Very diligent in the background working to help support this um, um, initiative. We're looking for um, 100 participation, if possible, at this orientation, which will be held on January 20th again from 10 to 3. We're hoping to use this forum as a networking session to better acquaint ourselves within this com committee as, as, um, as well, and also go through some guiding principles and you know norms and or role and different things what support what would you do in um, um or piac setting um so it'll be good for us and it's just us piac reps and with the coach here trying to get get ourselves navigate ourselves properly going forward and helping any new any new reps and then within that time within that time frame um a little bit of, for about an hour we will uh we have a we had planned a, a PIAC strategic planning um, conversation and strategic planning is one of our governance working group. And this is where uh, we need to have a uh, session before the February 3rd, 2024 conference. And the best time that uh, co-chair Sherrick and I thought it would, uh, would ha could happen would be in conjunction with our orientation session since we're gonna have our members there and then they don't have to come back twice online. It's important that we as a committee review our five-year vision and see if we have met these goals and objectives. We will also need to set our next five-year vision. We should be in alignment with the board's multi-year strategic plan. The board have started there, so now we need to start ours. 
to ensure that a committee we, as a committee, we can continue to provide effective advice to the board on behalf of our TDSB parents, guardian, caregivers, in order to improve student achievement and well-being. So it's to, it's a start in the conversation. We're not going to be doing. We're just going to start it. Okay. So this is we're just an explanation explanation as to why we need to do it. Um, PX School Council Empowerment Conference and registration is live. All PIAC members, CLG representative, parent caregivers, and community members, trustee, TDSB staff, register, register now for our annual conference to be held for uh, the 2023-2024 school year on Saturday, February 3rd, 2024, at, again at Hurley Secondary School, 100 Princess Avenue. Um, we're also calling for our PIAC School Council Empowerment Conference. We're calling for volunteers, our PIAC volunteers. Uh, we will need all PIAC members to be av available, um, if possible, to help support this conference and school council celebration, because this is our conference, all right? Uh, so it's conference by parents, for parents, by parents, in partnership with the TDSB. It's very important that we support our own events, and this conference is an opportunity to let our TDSB school councils and school community know about us and the work that we do to support encourage and enhance parent engagement at the board level in order to improve student achievement and well-being and the key word for us is uh, to help improve student um, achievement and well-being um, we've got some more um, the program and service uh, services meeting is coming up january 24th and um, also we have our PIAC working group meeting schedule so in in essence we're just uh, working out the kinks with our uh, working group colleagues um, review and then um, co uh, collaborate amongst themselves to get a good uh, finalized uh, date schedule for the rest of the 2023-2024 year, school year. And once we get that, then we'll em end up having that published to the general um, um, committee. And once we do that, we're encouraging um, any PIAP members who have not yet signed up to please sign up. Um, this is one of the important roles when you commit and uh, put your hat in the ring to be a co-rep. That's one of the requirements is that you help your voice at a working group because that's where the work is done. Let's talk because we have more time to take care of business there. And then we come to the general committee member to say, okay, from our working group, this is what we come up with in order to have a um, for the way forward as an advice to the board and um and then ask the co-chairs to help um, do that presentation where need be so it's very very important that we have every member um have a sign up for at least one working group we have governance working group and non-governance working group and um so our governance working group um uh, we have uh, our is um membership bylaws strategic planning, operational effectiveness, which is essentially the budget and operational matters and are open to all PIAC um, core reps and the CLG representative to PIAC. Our non-government governance working groups are communications, special events, school council support and consultations, which are open to, again, all PIAC core reps, representative, members, um, uh, member um, of the TDSB parent and caregivers, as well as persons from the community. And we have a very, very strong support uh, um, community member, Nicole, that helps us for years now. And she's uh, doing a phenomenal job in helping supporting PIAC, so we thank her. Please look out for the link from the PCC office to sign up for a working group and read a working group description. All, all of our working groups are supported by the TDSB PCCO team, Peer and Caregiver and Community Engagement Office. Um, please look out for our PIAC um, uh, post newsletter, newsletter and um, our strong team led by SEMA um, is helped supporting that through the communication team. Um, again, um, our PIAC Google Drive, so we'll go through a lot of that for, through our orientation. And um, we would like to, um, to thank our members um, for at least even saying that you're willing to throw a hat in a ring to help support your ward or, and, and, um, and help to... Um, for engaged um, and advocating for parent, caregivers, and guardians' voice, and the continued push for student achievement and well-being improves improvements. It may not be, it may not appear that our work is important and immediately impacted, though changes are happening. 
And um, so back to you, co-chair. Thank you, co-chair Grant. Uh, so I'll wrap it up really, uh, just to talk really quickly about the self-evaluation that was sent out. So part of the PIAC self-evaluation goes into the PIAC annual report, which we have to submit um, as per regulation 612 actually. So we have to get that report to Michelle's team, the PC CEO office, and we're on we're working on that right now. Part of that uh, self-evaluation is a big piece or part of a big piece of our annual report. It's the way that we reach out to members on an annual basis to get a sense of how they're feeling about PIAC, what PIAC's all about to them, what they want to see in PIAC. Do they feel the meetings are timely? It sounds like some of them are very clinical questions and some are open-ended, um, but we did receive all that information. It will be in our annual report. So if anyone's curious as to what, what folks were saying, it is anonymous. So it's not as though you're going to see a comment and have it, you know, that's who said this. So it actually is a very safe place to share how you feel about the year and we do that every year so there'll be another one coming out um, and that will come out December of next year uh, just to give everyone an idea at the same time if anyone ever has any questions concerns they can always email info at PIAC or, e or actually email the chairs directly now uh, we're going to move on to our trustee report that's being given by our trustee liaison Amitea Devotis to see the chance. Hello. Uh, thank you, and uh, uh, thank you for having me. I not meant uh, sure if you're able to maybe throw the report on the screen. I, I sent it out by email about a half an hour ago. Uh, so hopefully folks have a copy of it as well. And if not, and then I need to open it. So just give me one second. All right, sorry about that. Um, so I wanted to, um, I was thinking a little bit about the report I did last month and some of the stuff I shared, I think are, are things that are available to uh, most everybody. So I wanted to uh, sort of be able to um, uh, look out on the horizon in terms of things that are coming, because uh, I think that may be more helpful than um, just repeating things that you, you may already be receiving from your own schools and, and other folks as well. I, so I wanted to include a couple of things. First of all, um, I wanted to touch base on the M MYSP, the Multi-Year Strategic Plan. Uh, the draft report, uh, which is being worked on right now, is uh, coming to committee uh, uh, next week, um, uh, January 22nd. This is the final draft before a final uh, copy of the, of the report uh, comes to us uh, in February. Uh, so for those uh, that aren't familiar with the report, it's basically the strategic document that sets out guidelines and principles for uh, the school board around uh, policy, operational uh, priorities, and a number of other things. Uh, so the process uh, to get here was a number of different meetings uh, with uh, parents, uh, staff, uh, students, and so on. And that information has now been compiled through this, this sort of final draft. Uh, so I'll, I'll try and share it at the at the next uh, coming meeting. It's a significant document. We only do these. Uh, uh, every four years or so, so um, important for us to take a look at uh, the document and for everyone to chime in and, and sort of give their uh, opinion about what uh, they would like to see more of and, and so on and so on. I, so just uh, be on the lookout for it. And the, again, the report's coming up um, uh, in, uh, in January as a, a draft report just to be received and then a final report to be approved um, in, uh, in February. Uh, second item I um, wanted to share, I, and I mentioned it briefly um, uh, last month, but it's now been on the news a little bit, so you may have heard, uh, there is a motion to request a report on how it is that the school board can uh, limit, ban, uh, restrict, whatever you, word you're, you're more comfortable with, um, the use of mobile uh, uh, devices. Uh, so not just cell phones, but you know, it could be anything uh, down to um, uh, you know, your PlayStation 5 that you're hiding uh, in the computer room. And so how we do this is, is a complicated conversation uh, because of a number of different technical issues, but then uh, there's a lot of research around uh, the use of uh, mobile devices for younger children and, and there's a number of behavioral uh, elements that people are concerned with. Uh, and then we have to weigh in other issues as well. So it'd be 
happy to hear from folks in terms of what they think uh, the right balance may be on this, because uh, there's obviously elements around safety and, and access to your own children um, uh, in terms of how you can communicate with them um, at various ages and so on. So, uh, so that's coming up as well. And again, it's a request for a report. So the final report obviously hasn't been uh, started on just yet. Uh, then uh, the other item I wanted to talk about as much as I'm able to, I, and I'm, I'm sharing a, a third party uh, source for reason, uh, is uh, that the school board has been asking for uh, funding and approval. So funding and approval uh, that's subsequent to uh, that funding from the province to uh, build out 17 daycares in some of our schools throughout the city, uh, particularly in areas in the Northwest of the city and in Scarborough. Uh, these, uh, schools haven't started uh, as of last year. Uh, I would point out that uh, I'm not able to talk about what's happening this year uh, at the uh, the direction of the uh, Ministry of Education. Uh, and um, basically, uh, if folks are interested in finding out more about that, we expect to hear from the province at some point soon. Um, uh, but uh, uh, let me say this, for the last uh, previous six years, uh, we haven't received the funding. It's been promised every year. We spent a significant amount of money and sometimes designing the schools, uh, preparing to build the schools, uh, but then we're not either giving permission uh, to spend our own monies in some cases, or we're not giving the money required to build them out. Uh, so there's a bit of a story there to share with folks, because that's coming up as well over the next couple of months, uh, we expect. And then lastly, um, the first ever um, student needs budget is coming up. Uh, this is different than what we've done really since amalgamation, so it's important for us to uh, take note and participate in the process. Normally, we wait until the GSNs, the funding from the province comes in, and then we create our budget. We're going to create a budget first, and then uh, wait and see what it is that the province gives us. And that gives an opportunity to imagine a different type uh, of improved uh, school board, we hope. Uh, the one note, and part of the reason why I'm, I'm mentioning this is because the date for the launch is uh, currently uh, February 14th. However, unfortunately, the city of Toronto is uh, also doing their final budget. Uh, so we're starting on the 14th, they're ending on the 14th. So it may be that we end up uh, shifting the date a little bit uh, in order to accommodate uh, participation from different folks. Um, with that being said, I want to turn it back to the chairs and uh, thank you everyone for listening. I see a note that someone didn't receive it. I sent it to the PAC uh, list as I understand it. Uh, if someone doesn't have it, feel free to email me directly. Or, or maybe you communicate with staff. Uh, but I sent it about a half an hour ago. Thank you, Trustee Genevides, for your report. And we look forward to reading your report as well that was submitted. Moving on to our senior staff update, I'd like to welcome Executive Superintendent Shirley Chan and, Uton, and Executive Superintendent Utan Robinson. Um, we have the Associate Director in here as well, Azina. So. You're on mute. You were on mute, uh, Zena. You were on mute before. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I should have to pay PIAC $5 every time I mute myself. <laughs> so I apologize. We do have the associate director here as well. Audrey Salmon, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. And uh, again, Happy New Year to all. Uh, it is a, a pleasure to be here this evening uh, with my colleague, Executive Superintendent Yutan Robinson, and of course the Associate Director, Audley Salmon. Today we also have a, a guest speaker based on uh, input from PIAC. We have a couple of speakers coming in the next uh, two meetings. I'll just uh, give a heads up as to our February meeting. We do have our uh, system superintendents in the area of instructional innovation and equitable outcomes, uh, specifically math, uh, coming to speak to PIAC. And today, based on a request from PIAC, we have our centrally assigned principal of continuing education, Norbert Costa. So I, without further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, Norbert or ask Norbert to have his presentation, which was shared with PIAC. I believe earlier today, I, I did see in that email, so hopefully everybody was on there as well. And then after uh, uh, centrally assigned principal Costa speaks, I think uh, Executive Superintendent Utah will have some other comments. Okay, so over to Norbert. Thank you. 
Good evening, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. It's certainly a pleasure to share all the work that continuing education does um, across the board. Uh, 10 out of the 11 months of the year, <laughs> or sorry, 11 out of the 12 months of the year. So we work, our, our programs run from September to, uh, to July. Um, I'm wondering if the PowerPoint can be brought up. Uh, sorry, no, but uh, can you share the access to me? Uh, uh, if, if you just, uh, Manchu, if you could just give me sharing rights, I'll present it. Thanks. Okay, I will. Or if you want to give me sharing rights. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my apologies, Manshu, but I'm still waiting. Better yet, just give it directly to Norbert so he could do his presentation himself. My apologies, Norbert. He is the co-host now, so he can share. Sorry, Manshu, I I'm still don't have, uh, it says it's disabled. I know, but uh, yeah, I, I got see it. that I got you are uh, co-host. Yeah. Thank you. Emon, can you please everybody mute? Thank you. Okay, can everyone see that? Thank you. Yeah, we can. Excellent, thank you so much. So, so continuing education, uh, we provide a variety of different uh, programs and uh, supporting student achievement, well-being, and lifelong learning for over 100,000 learners each year from kindergarten to seniors. Our programs are delivered in locations across the city during the day, night, weekend, and in summer. And we collaborate with various TSB departments, schools, community organizations to, to promote diverse and responsive programming to the needs of our students. Here you'll find a list of the various programs that we offer regularly throughout the year. Adult English as a Second Language, General Interest as Seniors Daytime Programming, Credit Night School, Credit Saturday International Languages, Adult High School Daytime Credit, um, international languages, elementary and African heritage, literacy and numeracy programs outside the school day, programs for international adult students and educators, focus on youth programming and summer school. So it's quite an extensive list. Uh, to begin with, the first um, one that I'd like to share, oh, our adult ESL uh, program, uh, learners uh, improve their skills in many in English to gain Many of them are uh, newcomers to the to the uh, to the country and to the city, and their intent is to use to learn English to gain employment, or prepare to enter post secondary programs or participate in their community and in schools to support their children's education. These classes are free; uh, they are offered to residents uh, of Canada, and they're uh, um, right. Across, actually, it says there's an hourly fee for visitors. We do not offer that any anymore. Sorry. Uh, classes offered include conversation, language proficiency, um, and we also offer a teaching English as a second language 
training program for anyone interested in becoming an adult ESL instructor. Uh, the minimal requirements to enter this program is a, uh, a post-secondary school uh, university diploma. General interest in, in seniors' daytime programs, uh, many of you would uh, recognize as the Learn for Life program, uh, provides programs, uh, opportunities for adults to develop skills and interests and explore paths to health and wellness. We offer hundreds of courses throughout uh, four different terms. We offer a fall, winter, spring, and a summer opportunity. Um, the programs are as diverse as, our, as is our city. And we offer everything from business computers to cooking, dancing, fitness, uh, and variety of languages, music. It, the list goes on and on. There's just a few there on the screen. For students who are um, 18 to 20 year old, we offer, uh, and they are no longer in um, regular day school, we offer a program through the Advance program at, at our five adult high schools. We support uh, adult learners that are 21 and over in gaining their Ontario Secondary School Diploma. And we also provide specific um, job training in uh, personal support worker, child care assistant, medical office assistant, hairstyling. Um, the schools are located across the city uh, to provide as much access to them as, as we can for all of our learners. Burnham Thorpe Adult Learning Center in Etobicoke, uh, City Adult Learning Center uh, downtown on Danforth, Emory Adult Learning Center um, on Finch, Scarborough Center for Alternative Studies, and also Yorkdale Adult Learning Center. These programs are all uh, free as well, and they are divided into five quadmesters, which means there's five semesters throughout the, the term from uh, September to um to to june and then the summer as well credit night school this is for students that are in uh regular day school and in many cases are, are working towards credit accumulation or changing pathways or to recover or gain a credit that may not be offered in the regular day school um night school credit um is offered twice a year in two semesters. The uh, fall semester that runs from September or October till uh, January, and then the second semester runs from February uh, to June. We also offer through this program, uh, Saturday International Languages Credit Programs, and these run on Saturdays, and they run for the full year on the Saturdays. Throughout the year, we also offer students in grades seven to 12, the opportunity to be supported uh, to further develop their skills in literacy and numeracy and to build confidence in these areas. Uh, ministry guidelines require pencil recommendation for students to attend the program. And these classes are taught for the most part directly after school uh, at the student school, usually by teachers within the day school as well. So they're familiar and connected to the students in the community. We also offer a unique program uh, where we support international adult students attending uh, one of our adult, five adult high schools. And through our, the academic pathway, these students can earn credits, meet post-secondary prerequisites and earn co-op uh, certificates and then move on to post-secondary programming. We also offer uh, support for international educators that come uh, to TDSB. Uh, for professional learning opportunities through a variety of different uh, uh, programs and special interests. That's right. Uh, we offer in July a number, uh, July and August, a number of summer programs across the city, uh, elementary summer school, we offer Head Start to High School program at the last week of August for grade eight students moving into high school. We offer an inter elementary international languages and African heritage summer program, uh, a music and arts camp, an international summer camp for students ages 12 to 17 uh, visiting Toronto, secondary credit focus on youth employment opportunities, adult ESL, adult high school credit, general interest courses, and in some cases, we also offer parent and guardian programs. 
the continuing education collaborates uh, very closely with many partners across the TDSB, uh, listing a few there, the Center of Excellence for Black Student Achievement, uh, the Urban Indigenous Education Center, Early Years, Model Schools, Special Education, Outdoor Education, Leadership, and Learning and School Improvement. And the last program that I'm going to share with everyone is the International Language Elementary and African Heritage Program for students in kindergarten to grade eight. Uh, and these programs are offered after school evenings and on weekends. Um, the programs combine language and culture learning uh, with engaging activities. Uh, many times uh, we also work with community partners to support uh, the programs. We offer over 50 languages across the, across the, the TDSB. Uh, the top five languages are listed uh, below, Mandarin Simplified, Tamil, Spanish, Arabic, and Cantonese. And we also offer um, American Sign Language as well, amongst <laughs> 50 others. So um, that concludes. I know it's a lot. I was told that we have about 15 minutes. So uh, I also want to leave some time for, for questions um, and just want to, to share that. Uh, and I'll leave it now up to um, turn it over for any questions. Thank you. Essentially assigned Principal Costa. Uh, I want to make sure if there is any other report needed from senior from staff or are we OK to open up questions? I, I believe let's um, have uh, some questions, if I may suggest that through the chair. And then there's a couple of other announcements that uh, I will make following the questions. But I did want to thank Norbert uh, at this point for the presentation that he provided. I know firsthand the work that he, as well as his team, has done for a number of years in order to support students and parents and community <laughs> members through their program in continuing education. So at this point, I will defer back to Norbert to respond to the hands that have been raised. So for Ward 11, um, uh, Co-Chair uh, Sherrick, and then Ward 15. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, this is Janice, uh, Ward 11, and thank you, Norbert, for that presentation. I have a question specifically for students that have completed their high school credits but still need to write the OSSLT. Um, what's the mechanism for them to um, to uh, write the OSSLT? Is there a course that they can take or can they actually just sit in an exam somewhere? So typically what we recommend is to begin with their home school to see if they can accommodate. Uh, they know the student well, have the copy of the OSR uh, and are able to might be able to accommodate that student if they're no longer um, in uh, their their day school, then they should they can connect with us at uh, Continue Education, and we can offer them the opportunity through one of our uh, three terms, either first semester, second semester, or in summer, to look at how we can best uh, support them. Great, thank you so much. So, Ward Fifteen, Zina. Yes, go ahead. Pardon? Is that a question for me, Zina? Uh, no, Yusuf, uh, Ward 15, please go ahead, ask your question. Yusuf, would you still like to ask your question? You seem to be on mute. I've been asking my question twice and I was on mute. What a surprise for myself. <laughs> Norbert, you just now mentioned that uh, this continuing education is for adults also 21 years and above. Uh, so, what courses are offered for these adult people? So, we have a variety of courses. If the adults that are 21 and over are looking to complete their secondary school diploma, they can work to complete it at one of our adult day schools. And uh, depending on their uh, needs and, the, and how many credits they've accumulated previously, or if they haven't accumulated any, could vary from English, math, science, uh, to complete their Ontario Secondary School Diploma. For adults as well that are working towards their Ontario Secondary School Diploma, um, we also have a 
uh, PLAR process, a prior learning uh, uh, process where uh, a, a student's prior experiences, work experiences, family experiences can also be uh, used towards earning credits to, to gain the 30 credits that are required to achieve their Ontario Secondary School Diploma. So that's one area for adults, and, those, and they can attend any of our uh, adult day schools, and we also offer an evening program through our night school credit program. When they enroll, they can work with the guidance counselor to figure out what's the best path for them to complete their Ontario uh, Secondary School uh, Diploma. Right, uh, and you sort of mentioned that uh, yeah, I got also... So separately from that, we also offer general interest courses, which are fee-for-service programs where any adult that's 18 to seniors, uh, uh, any age, can participate and enroll. And those are uh, evening courses that are general interest. And there's hundreds of courses. It would take us all night if I went through all the different courses we offer uh, through our Learn for Life program. If there is interest in... Uh, we're still, uh, we just started our winter semester, so if there's interest, um, the website is very easy to remember, www.learn, the number four, life.ca, learnforlife.ca. So, uh, and we've said, we usually send uh, information on those programs as they come out earlier through Trustees Weekly and through our internal system as well. Good. Uh, some, some of you mentioned that... Uh some job related also something you mentioned so in some of our uh, adult day schools we have uh, uh, psw programs or hair styling programs depending on which school uh, you'd have to connect directly with the school around enrollment uh, they are very very popular and quite often we do have wait lists so uh, that would be uh, if there are uh, members interested and learners interested they would need to connect directly to the uh, adult day school that is closest to their home or can, they can attend to enroll in those programs. Perfect. Thank you very much. Very good. Okay. So I'm going to look at the, I'm looking at the uh, um, questions in the chat box. Uh, uh, and one of the questions was, has there been changes, increase and decrease in the number of international uh, languages, elementary and African heritage program uh, classes offered over the past three to four years? It's a great question. Uh, the enrollment has you know, during the pandemic was affected and we, once we came out of the pandemic, we have worked really hard with uh, communities and schools to provide the opportunities we had pre-pandemic and we continually work on uh, offering the programs where there is a need and, and, and requests from, uh, from parents and where it's available. And so sometimes that program might be in an evening program or it might be a language on a Saturday or it might be directly after school. Uh, so overall, from pre-pandemic to current numbers, there has been a decrease, but we continue to look at uh, how we can best serve the needs of uh, all our learners in the International Language Elementary and African Heritage Program. The, the next question was, what prerequisites were required for teaching English as a second language? Uh, you will need a university degree uh, to, in anything, to apply to the TESOL, Teaching English as a Second Language course, uh, and we offer that uh, yearly as well. And it can be taken through us or through uh, community colleges as well. So university, if someone wrote it afterwards, I should have read the next one. <laughs> okay, uh, Ward 11 is okay, next um, on my screen. No, no, um, not Ward 11. Uh, sorry, no, sorry, Robert. Sorry, it's Sharon, that... thank you. No, no, no problem. Trustee De DeVitas is the next. And and then I think, I'm not sure, if, uh, maybe it was a legacy hand. And I think Ward 15, I think you're a legacy hand as well. And after that, we're going to, um, then I'll put it back to uh, Chair uh, Sherrick. So, Zina, it's tr the Trustee um, DeVitas. So, quick question. Um, and, and thanks, Norbert, for this. And I'm just going to say, uh, I'm a fan of a lot of the programs here. I share all this information as many times as I can, and I'm glad to see this presentation here. Um, I was gonna ask if there are shareables. I know that we can refer people to a website, but sometimes the websites can be a little bit uh, difficult to manage for people. Um, are, are there like shareables? Like I know that I always share on social media when I see uh, any of these programs um, that we can sort of package together and send out to everybody here that then they can share with their own uh, districts so that uh, we can get the information out because I feel like often people don't sure. know. Sure. What, what I can do is uh, uh, the 
the PowerPoint can be shared, but I, what I'll do is I'll, I will send to um, somebody, or to Shirley. PCCO, Michelle, yeah. PCCO I'll, office, okay. I'll, I'll send Shirley Chan or, or the PCO office uh, a one page front and back uh, that has a, a quick summary of each of our programs. Mm -hmm. And on that uh, page as well would be a link to the specific program that someone might be interested in. And then that way, it might be an easier way to, to do that. And uh, on that note, I want to thank everyone for you know listening. Uh, we appreciate and we really value the partnerships that we have across the city with uh, um, parents and trustees and community groups uh and 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 it's integral that, that we have your support in um ensuring that these programs reach all of our learners so thank you i've got um zina is it okay if i ask uh, norbert a question Absolutely. or make a comment sure. Sure, go ahead. okay yep. um norbert um it pleases me and it's with great pleasure that i get to see you on and um you are inspiration to a lot of us, especially in our ward. Um, if a lot of parents don't know, he's instrumental in that Focus on Youth project that helps um, the youths and summer. So not only does he does uh, um, his, his, his work and his team help support the night school program that we do, as well as all the country and education, but also, you, you know, if you're elementary parents, be forewarned, you can get, by the time you hit grade 11, grade 12 in your school, uh, um, your child can, um, through the high school and through the work with Norbert's office, uh, get a summer employment um, experience with a community um, team. So I know that um, and it's very fair, very fair group. And um, he's a very fair person and he's very, very approachable. And I had to say that because I was smiling from ear to ear that I see you. And I, we speak, but I finally get to see you. Because of course, eh? yeah, so absolutely. Thank just you. Just want Sharon. to let the parents, uh, yeah, and PR reps, he's approachable. So, you know, if you want to do any kind of advocacy, advocacy local, locally um, for your school, especially high school, he, he he's able to support. FYI. Thank you, Norbert. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs>
Um, so moving on. Uh, we um, sorry, also... Zina, before we move on, I had promised a working group team that um, that they'd be able to ask. Uh, I don't know. Um, I think, um, Andrew, you're able to ask a question now too um, about the um, sh our or Sarah about sharing um, why um, the school council email address can't be shared uh, and get a little bit of literature on it. I had promised that they would get an opportunity to ask. So if you're willing to ask uh, now that we have senior staff, go ahead. Well, uh, Sarah from Ward 2. Yeah, this yeah. is um, actually it's now two, not only uh, the school council, but also PIAC itself um, in order to um, obviously the engagement of it. Uh, the part I, you know, many of us in the school council support working group brought up is the lack of sharing of email, specifically if when you get elected in the school council as a coach or executive, you already pretty much gave that authority or so on to be able to share your email or the principals to be able to share your emails with other entities. So I did not understand and the team itself why that was the case when it comes to school council. And this is not about the parents per se of the school. We're not asking for the parents' emails, but just the executive of the school councils. Um, if I may? Yeah. If I may begin, and I, I welcome my colleagues, Executive Robinson Chan or Associate Simon to, to fill in. So in terms of personal information, personal information in our district is deemed as private information under our privacy policy, but also MFIPA. So although they take on a public position in our board, we still need consent in short of sharing that private information. So, you know, private information is considered first name, last name, email information. So this is why we have been diligently working to say uh, wherever a TDSB school has elected a school council chair, that they should activate the TDSB email account so all parents and caregivers will be able to access that instead of someone's individual personal email account. At this point, we have no policy or procedure that states that once you take on a school council role in our board, you're required uh, to relay your personal information. If that's something we wish to do as a district, um, then uh, we first need to provide a medium through which through which our leadership can, our school council chairs, our committee advisory committee co-chairs is able to fulfill their role in terms of a email account. Uh, and so until something changes, which is not in our district, we use our existing system of putting in place the TDSB shared email account to be used by school council chairs, but also our CAC co-chairs. And I'll leave it at that. Um, um, Zina, our next co-chair, Sherrick, the next uh, person would be Nadia Ward 2, 22, and then Andrew. Thank you. Um, sorry, so just quick question. Um, is there a way that we can just get a list of schools that has school councils and a list of schools that does not have school councils? That way we can, like as um, ward reps, we could reach out to the schools that has school councils and just via like to the principal and then we could send out some communications. So for example, with the event, right? We were hoping that each rep could just help reach out to the schools within their award to communicate that this event is happening, have more of a personal um, touch and, you know, and be able to like, you know, communicate in that direction. And this would also give reps an opportunity to reach out and say, hey, I'm also your ward rep, just in case you didn't know. Um, I just want to introduce myself. And, you know, so it's a, it's a two in one at the same time, like, and regardless of the event, is there a way that like, as reps that we can reach out and say, hey, we're your rep, like we're here to represent um, school councils and and support within like what what would be the communication along those channels? 
for you, Chair, if I may, I'll, I'll take that one as well. I'll also opening the opportunity for my colleagues to, to fill in. We collect school council chair emails on an annual basis, and we have shared that what we collect, we share as we collect it with the PIAC co-chairs. So we have shared a master list of what we've collected with the PIAC co-chairs. We have also shared the, the communication guidelines around how and how the email should be managed and used based on what we've collected. What we can do again is maybe my office can take that list and divide it by wards and share what we have collected to date. Uh, because as, as indicated before, we get consent for personal and we also encourage that the TDSB school council email account be used where it's not used, we get consent. So what we do each year in our call out, which is what was shared with you by Peter when he was here at last, that we do a call out each year asking once elections are held that that the we seek consent to get the names of school council chairs, their emails, but also encourage to activate their 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 TDSB email account. Once we collect that, we collect that twice a year in early parts of November so we can share that with the school council chairs, with the with the PIA co-chairs, and then we collect it again uh, in February. What we do is we keep the shared file open. And so as we see the addition, so will our co-chairs. So what my office will do is we'll go back and we'll divvy that list up by wards based on the consent that we have given. And I'll leave it to the co-chairs to have conversations about the wards. Again, a reminder of how the emails are to be used when communicating. Thank you, Michelle. Um, just one other question. Is there a way for us to also get like a list of the schools within our awards, not just like no uh, personal contact or anything like that, like no email addresses, just a list of who's within our awards? Like I know who's within my award, but I'm just um, asking for like some of the new reps. They might not know how to access something like that. And I know they might learn that through the orientation, but I'm just raising the question right now. Through you, Chair, just to be sure I understand the question. So the list we have would give you the school council, the name of the school, the school council chair contact, and a contact email. Is that what you're asking, Nadia? No, I'm just asking no. for a list of schools within our ward. Oh, Is there okay. a way to obtain that? Yes, there is. Okay. And so how, where would we go to get this? Something like such. I think the simplest way what I could probably do is if it would be helpful to each ward, uh, the trustees on their sites have a list of all of their schools. And so what we can probably do is just simply provide you with the with the links to the trustees. So every by ward. So then you'll be able to go in and see the list of elementary and high schools that are connected to your ward. OK, thank you. All right. We have Andrew and then Mercy. Andrew, go ahead. Um, we have something in the chat as well. Okay. Thanks. Um, I, I guess uh, this is to the co-chairs. Have you guys received that email list? And when did you receive it? It, it would be mostly, I, um, I don't recall seeing the list, but uh, Michelle, when did you send that to us? A lot of emails going through. I could go back and double check that uh, through your co-chairs and I will resend that information out. Actually, what I'll probably do is what I propose that I will do. I'll see if we can't go in and do it by, by wards. So then we'll share it with the co-chairs by ward if that's helpful. Yeah. Uh, the challenging part with that is when it gets updated, uh, we're going to have to probably go back in February to take a look at that list again. But at least please note that what we have is what co-chairs have given information and consent to be shared. And what we'll think about is as well, because we have created, if PIAC ward reps, as we've been encouraging you to do, and very few have done to date, activate your PIAC accounts, 
you will be able to go into our system and be able to actually send email to all of your schools. Um, and what we encourage is that you use the personal emails that we provide you, but you also use the TDSB accounts that have been created for every school um, across the district. And so what, what we can probably do, if it's okay with you, Chair, is probably bring a presentation back for PIAC reps again, or an arrangement with John where we can actually walk PIAC reps again in terms of how you go about activating your account, what's you're in, how you go in and find all school councils where you can begin to email, just create a group, a, a group e-list of all of the schools in your ward and that you'll be sharing information to those in including to the personals um, emails. So it could be managed the exact way we manage your email. So for example, what you will find is when we send you emails from our office, all PIAC reps, what you see only is the wards. You see your ward-based email, but we have to blank copy your personal emails. And so that is the way we, we know it could actually work uh, when you are communicating with your school councils that you use the school council TDSB shared email address that was created for that school. And also you blank copy the personal email address in your group. And we'll be more than willing to have further conversation with PIAC. If PIAC reps, I believe another communication was shared with all PIAC reps, encouraging them from John to attempt to activate your accounts. Uh, so he will be able to walk you through how you'd be able to do that. Uh, okay. Thank you. One additional, I guess, uh, a comment uh, for our new members. Um, the breaking it up by ward and providing it, the emails to all ward reps or, rep, or reps was a, a consistent practice going back at least five, if not more years. So I'm, I'm not sure why that had to change and why the information was not provided sooner. I know the events working group has been trying to get this information now since before Christmas, and it would have been very helpful to have this information to try to get people to attend the event. So again, this is a barrier that is of concern. Uh, through uh, you, Chair, if I may. Uh, noted in terms of that the information should be shared. So I will go back, uh, take responsibility for that and go back and double check uh, the timing of the distribution and get it out to the members as soon as possible. Thank you. Uh, I have Mercy, but I don't see a hand up anymore. Mercy, are you still? Um, um, there's something in the chat before Mercy. Is Sorry, that okay? Sharon, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Um... But um, there was um, um, from Ward Nine um, said that the school. What's the difference? The school school uh, chairs' names are listed on the school website um, as our PIAC reps. Well, PIAC reps. That was something that PIAC fought for to have our names on the website, um, and the link would go to PIAC. We we were never included up to three years ago on the website, so nobody knew who PIAC was, and because of COVID and the virtual uh, uh, working group. Uh, we were that was one of the ask, and we didn't have to go to board for that. The the, the district um, gladly um, accommodated us or agreed to have the PIAC rep's name on there as um, and so that's one of the ways we can determine um, who we're reps for. Um, Michelle, are you able to um, um, identify or say what's the difference? Is it because the parents agreed to have their name on the website? How does it work? What's the difference? Uh, you, Chair, it's about consent. Yes, and I had alluded to that earlier. Okay. That we collected, but we collected in a consent basis. So we ask for that information and mm -hmm. state for the purpose of why we're collecting that information. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, then, uh, Zina, then uh, Mercy, right? Go ahead, Zina. That's oh, right. I noticed there was actually a question in the chat from Mercy. So I'm not sure if this was the question that was going to be asked with the hand up, and that was, how does one activate a PIAC account? And can I please have a link? So I think Michelle might have briefed on that really quickly, but if you could sort of sum it up, Michelle, as to how a link can get sent out, please. If you go into your email and you search for John Manalo, actually he sent you an, e an email this week again to all the PIAC reps. Uh, if not, I'll make note of it and I'll send the communication again out tomorrow morning to all PIAC reps where it outlines and give you the instructions as to how to go about activating your accounts. 
And just so you know, that's one of the things that orientation we're going to be discussing as well. So I um, hope to see you on Saturday. And this is part of our orientation um, update as well. FYI, everyone. Um, okay. Um, I think Thank it's Tanya. You. So, uh, Mercy, was that okay? Or did you still have a question? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. I might have missed it. I think I was just wondering like, if the names of the councils are on the website, but then it doesn't include their emails. Um, and I know they have TDSB emails, but some might not be activated yet, or they might not have access to it. So what would be like, how would we communicate with them? And I think I heard that a list of names would be circulated, but then like, I'm not sure about the email part. Um, is it okay? Zina, I'm gonna use, um, because of the spirit of peer, I'm gonna give some advice to our peer um, co-chairs, co-reps because, oh I had to go through that as a co-rep. And what I did, I actually clicked on my um, trustee name and I looked at all the schools and familiarized myself with all the schools that's the trustee that's listed. So as you being co-reps, um, your trustee is the elected official and then you're the elected parents within the trustee group. So all the schools that your trustee is attached to, as a trustee, you're attached to the exact same school as the parent voice within the ward. So, um, and then what I did, and I and I literally did that, I would um, go, and if I cannot, I don't have a, a contact, I would email the principal. And the principal email address is, you know, the first name, dot the last name of that principal. I'll just look at, the, look at the website, see who the principal name is for all my schools and their, and their VPs. And I would actually put them on there and then I CC this executive superintendent and our dear superintendents. And then do the invitation like that, and then that way it, uh, the principal will will need to um, address and get the information too. That's another workaround that I've done, and I thought it was very successful, and and even provide PIAC events through that medium to the ward as well. And I would also um, CC my trustee on that um, notification. That's another way that you do it, and um, to get um, um, the each principal or each uh, leader within a uh, principal within the school to respond back. That's another workaround. Okay, so that's good, Sharon. I was thinking of doing that, but I wasn't sure if uh, the principal would allow me to have that information, but I'll try that for sure. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Sharon. Um, now I do see Tanya's hand up, and I'm not quite sure if Andrew's is a legacy hand. To be mindful of time for the carrying on of our agenda, um, I'm gonna ask Tanya, and then again, if Andrew has something to share or would like to ask a question, and then we're gonna move on to our CEO report. Excellent. Thank you um, for taking my question. Um, so in, I just became a PIAC rep maybe a year and a half ago, a year ago. Um, and um, in my experience, it has been difficult to get that email set up, especially when you have a co-rep, because I believe my understanding is the email is assigned per ward. So if there is a co-rep, then there's issues with passwords and getting access to this email account or having to communicate with your co-rep as to what that password might be um, to get access to this account. Anyways, then the, the Jex is, it, could we possibly ask John uh, if he could attend the orientation or could there, be during the orientation some kind of hands-on workshop to walk reps through the steps of getting on there. Um, most people will hopefully have devices, but there's got to be some way to be able to do that with some actual in-person help, and maybe the orientation is a good place to do so. Uh, I, I was thinking to it. Unfortunately, no, uh... John is not available to be available at your event. On Saturday, uh, your co-chairs had inquired to that, uh, but he's not available. I will say in response to the sessions, uh, we have made and put out multiple calls to PIAC to do individual one-in-one -in -one sessions to walk PIAC reps through the activation. What we will do again is we can actually put out multiple dates to PIAC reps during the day and in the evening offering the opportunity for you to meet with John, uh, where he in that moment will assist in walking you through how to activate the your European account. 
uh, and sort of outline how you do it as co reps. So we'll look again to uh, your, your schedule is kind of busy, but we'll try to find some dates within February, March and April right throughout the year to see if we can't get all members um, to activate their accounts. Is it okay if I say something, Zina? Um, thank you, Michelle. Z uh, Michelle, I wanted to ask um, if uh, possible, there may be an opportunity, and I'll talk to the events to have maybe uh, an area if John is visit is going to be attending to support P the the PIAC event. Maybe have a, a little booth or a, a classroom where he'll be available, and we can kind of divvy up sending reps there to help. Sorry, uh, Sharon. To help support. Sorry, Sharon. To sorry, Sharon. To interrupt. Um. But that was already that's that was spoke about, spoken about, and we'll look into that. Okay. All right. Okay. It was brought. It was brought to my attention. It wasn't spoken amongst the okay. Uh, group. Okay. Okay. All right then. Okay. Thanks. So we'll take that offline. We're we're gonna try every our best um our PR membership. Hopefully um hoping to see all on orientation. We can't get that done if we can get some stuff done, and hope and hope to see a hundred percent attendance to the events. So to see how we can help collaborate and talk to each other, network and figure out the best practice for us to get access to what we need to get access to. And and, um, and if we're not strong um, with device, you know, with a new uh, um, way of doing things, you know, um, we're gonna see if we can help get someone to help walk us through. Cause I'm not strong with this computer stuff. I have to always get help. So I understand if it's, um, it's a challenge for you, we'll try to um, um, bridge that gap for you. Thanks, go ahead, Zina. Thank you for all the great questions and thank you for all the great answers. Uh, more answers and questions to come, I am sure. I'm gonna move on to the PCCEO update, Michelle Monroe. The moment I am to speak, I mute myself. Uh, my apologies. I have provided uh, a written report so I will only speak to two items that are not within that report. And I believe the questions had come directly from the school council working group. The first one was directly related to school cash online. And as uh, the question was whether, whether school councils will be able to have access to school cash online, I, I double checked with our department and they indicated that there is no plans to do that at this time uh, due to the cost of, of, of the expansion or adding additional members to school cash online. So that's not in the works at this particular point in time. The other about school cash online was about e-transfers uh, in light of the fees that are connected to Alterna. Uh, they were looking at ways in which school councils may want to support the cost of that. And right now, uh, School Cash Online is not designed to do that. Uh, so it's not a possible to do so at this particular time. What my colleague has suggested is that they are doing some review right now to explore what are some of the options for schools, more detailed options for schools who are having challenges with the fees. And right now, one of the most viable option uh, that they say is offered is that school councils who have an account with Alterna, it's not required that you hold that account with Alterna, that the, that the Toronto District School Board is a viable option in terms of having your account uh, within within the school. Uh, so my colleagues will be putting forth something for me that I'll be able to put out to you as a committee in terms of what they're thinking about what some of those active options are. In addition to the Alterna issue, there was a communication that was prepared by our by that business department and it, finance department, I'm sorry, and it was shared with all school councils who were implicated by by uh, by the shift in banking. And that communication also outlined some options for could outline some options for um, for those who bank with Alterna. And I'll leave it at there to share to take any questions that may come. Oh, my apologies. There's one more thing that was asked by the school council was about an in-person treasurer workshop presentation. I brought it again to our finance department. They are, they're 
presently experiencing shortage of staff, so they are recommending that we do. They have provided a training that has been recorded that is available for all treasurers on, on their website. I could reshare that while they continue to explore the possibility of finding staff to present an in-person session or two for treasurers. And my, I'll leave it at that, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, so I'm going to go to the chat to see if there are any questions, and then I will open up the floor because this way people can ask questions of all presentations that have been made tonight. Um, so one of the questions was, um, so councils can use another bank instead of Alterna? Through you, Chair. Uh, yes, at this time we have not, we don't have any procedure that limits that. Thank you. I, um, I'm now going to, we're going to open it up to questions again, being mindful of time um, as well. So I have Andrew. Go ahead, Andrew. Uh, yes, uh, just two quick things. Uh, first, for our new members, uh, this issue uh, was only brought to PX attention last, uh, I think it was May, about a month prior to the change we're hopping with Alterna um, from PACE. Uh, PACE was an insolvent credit union for about three years, and TDSB staff and finance chose not to explore other options. So that's why we're left with Alterna, and Alterna can basically charge us whatever they want. Um, I'm an accountant. Um, I always raise this issue. Uh, the Toronto District School Board has an operating budget and capital uh, budgets that are, um, well, the operating budget's larger than uh, Prince Edward Island, and the capital budget is, is comparable. And, um, you know, this is not really that much for this um, committee to discuss too much, but um, it is shocking that um, uh, with that amount of responsibility that um, there there appears to be a lack of oversight and my understanding from what was communicated in September was they're not looking to make a change until at least 2025 year um, which I, from my perspective is unacceptable um, I think that the uh, PX should uh, be putting recommendations to all school councils to um, um, uh, look at other uh, banks uh, to bank with um, again banking with exclusively with TDSB sets up gatekeeper issues and uh, being an accountability mechanism um, with the principal and administration the funds uh, should not be under the exclusive purview of of that person that uh, the school council is trying to be held accountable thank you Through you chair if I may uh, I think it's necessary that I provide some comments based on Mr. Waters uh, commentary as presented by the staff when this rolled out and they attended a school council uh, hall, town hall, where the staff spoke specifically to this. And what the staff indicated, it is not that the board was not diligent. Actually, the board was diligent in its actions because the notification that came to the district of the size of our district, for the district to pivot and appropriately support councils and our district in putting out an RFP to do something differently would have been far more challenging than where we are now. What the staff has clearly said is that they are in the process of reviewing and exploring what the possibilities will, will be in addressing this particular issue. And I will be sure that I send to PIAC directly the comments and the and the FAQ that was prepared by the department. So PIAC has a clear message coming from the staff as to what had unfolded and how it unfolded. As for TDSB being a gatekeeper, the intent of the account is not for TDSB to be a gatekeeper. It's a viable option and it is at the discretion of councils to use it or not use it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Michelle. At the moment, if I don't see any questions, Sharon, if you can double check, I'm gonna pass the, the baton on to you, so to speak, of the rest of the meeting uh, to take on our working group reports. Um, I don't see anything and thank you. Um, just for the membership we're sharing, uh, who's, uh, uh, co-leading and we're just going to do a collaborative effort for this time around um, for working group um, the operational effectiveness Kadeen and Kadeen and Sarah um, and I think there's a motion so go ahead um, operational effectiveness which is the budget
All right. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Uh, sorry, I'm just kind of assembling. So do you? Okay. So we need a motion on the on on the screen, Katie. Let us know what you need, and then we can try to support. Uh, yeah. Well, if you have the copy of the uh, of the operational effectiveness working group report, uh, we'd like to put forward a budget. <clears throat> For the remainder of the 23 of this of the school year, the 2023-24 school year uh, for PIOC. And uh, want to also just extend our thanks to the working group leads and uh, who provided uh, their their requests for uh, budgets. Budget requests for the remainder of the year. Um, so, yeah, just so that there's something to look at. I also have to pull up my, my own um, notes. Um, um, Michelle, would you be able to, um, for Katie and put up the, uh, I do working... have it ready chair. I'm just waiting for Manshu to give me co-host. All right. So we had a, um, sorry, a working budget for this year of just about, sorry, I can't find my stuff right now. So, did you get uh, co-host duties as yet, um, Michelle? Just... Do you, Chair? No, not yet. Manshu, could you just give me co-host, please? Oh, you're on co-host now, um, Michelle. I see it. Go ahead. Here you go, Kadeen. All right, perfect. Um, thank you. So, uh, just to put forward, uh, the budget for the year, we have a working budget of $44,252 with some actual paid expenses for the year, leaving us with a balance of 43721 Uh, we approved $30,000 for the event working group, uh, at the end of last school year, uh, I believe it was June, uh, to support the planning of the of the PIAC event for the school year, leaving us with a balance of 13,721. Uh, we have discussed some uh, reoccurring expenses uh, for our communications work, including, and not limited to uh, our, sorry, mail chip accounts, Canva and domain, um, domain hosting. Uh, so we also have uh, some requests and a request which we will hear more about coming forward from the school council um, working group uh, for $500 to be allocated per ward to encourage engagement and support for PIAC reps uh, to do engagement in the communities <clears throat> along with um, of four hundred dollars that would allow us a two year continued a two year period continued with our zoom accounts that will just support us in our transition uh as we move into hosting our uh our sorry our meetings our committee meetings and general membership meetings on teams at four hundred dollars uh so we would like to uh, we also, I'm sorry, had additional requests that will also come forward as motions for this evening uh, to support uh, consultants to take on particular pieces of work for the uh, for the membership. So we would like to uh, put forward a recommendation to approve the request for thirteen thousand four hundred dollars um, in the remaining uh, budget or sorry balance for communications, fixed costs, uh, school council engagement on a word by word basis, along with our Zoom Pro account. And then uh, come back and revisit this following the April variance report that if there's underspending that occurs that we can uh, allocate 5,000 uh, for the communications working group as along with school council to support uh, to look further at hiring outside consultants for specific pieces of work, along with $5,000 for further strategic planning work for this school year. And put that to the floor for any questions, comments, and I guess approval as well for the budget moving forward. Sorry, so Kate, I'm sorry, Katie. So 
uh, you're asking be it resolved that uh, you're looking for confirmation for thirteen the thirteen thousand four hundred dollars uh, to be split amongst the thirteen thousand four hundred dollars mm -hmm. to include the following two thousand dollars to communications for fixed expenses and renewal of uh, some of our accounts that support our communications work uh, four hundred dollars to uh, renew our Zoom Pro account uh, for two years while we transition our meetings to Microsoft Teams and an $11,000 to be allocated um, to school council engagement at $500 per each ward. Okay, so it so the if we can um, fix the in the motion section that portion that's above need to be in that motion section, but um, we can fix that so that uh, the agenda will show that that the, the upper portion of, go back up, uh, Michelle. So just a member, so member, the members are aware. So the, this particular breakdown, the Needs project request, yeah, in, to, in, the, in the motion, in the so moment. that, yeah, yeah. Just, um, uh, and then, so um, the membership understands that this is what we're looking, the breakdown of the allocation that you're looking to, to um, get a, a vote on. So yes, um, yeah, go ahead. Um, who is, uh, I know, who's second? You brought the motion forward. Who will be second in the motion? Anyone? Board member Sanders. 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 Sanders.
are you asking Ward 1 that perhaps that should be in the motion that um, this the breakdown of the expenditure uh, will be um, addressed later on um, that it in that motion that it has to come back to committee for a vote? Are you asking for that to be uh, amended in the motion and highlighted in the motion? Um, I know that the 100, 100, 200 breakdown was um, in another area. I'm not sure if that it'll come back for a vote. I think I did see that though somewhere, unless it was just said um, when when um, Sarah read out the motion that it'll come back for another vote at another time. Can you remind me, Sarah? Did you say that in, as part yeah. of the motion? So, if it's, if so, it's reported, I don't need the mo I don't need the motion. Exactly. Anymore. Yeah. Let me verify, Co-Chair uh, Sharon. We're not asking. We just want to make sure that the five hundred is officially allocated and it's done. How it's going to be distributed, we can discuss it later. Right. So or if it's or if it's on. or if it's not used, it can go back into the. Uh, it can go back into the and that okay. doesn't mean that okay. every PAC rep needs to use it. So if there's some PAC rep that don't want to get involved with the engagement, that is absolutely fine and it goes back to the government or to the budget of PAC. Okay. Yeah. Um, and let me see if there's another question. Um, uh, and um, is this oh, just another quest? Is this in addition to communication, because there's there are two groups that um, involve engagement and and uh, and, com and outreach. You have the communication group, and you also have events. So how is this different from communication events that already have a budget to help support outreach? How is this different, or is it something that would would in collaboration with, and it's additional funds that um to go towards it? How does this? How is this school council? different from communications doing the same type of work in collaboration with another working group or events um, that are doing some work. How, please advise, how is, it, how is this different? So uh, Sharon, are you talking about the 500 or are you talking about the email component, the other motion that we set forward? No, the 500, the engagement part. No, that has nothing to do with what others are doing because this hasn't been done. If I may, uh, Seema speaking here for communications. Yeah. Communications doesn't do outreach anymore. We focus strictly on communication. This is an outreach activity. So that's okay. why it's not a communication. I mean, we'll support it 100%. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like we do with the conference event. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, go ahead. And, uh, Go ahead, Andrew. Uh, thank you. Yeah, just a couple quick points. Um, I think it was already mentioned, but um, these were all the requests that were received from all the different uh, working groups. And um, if you see here the way the, the, the budget motion is written, um, I actually uh, firmly believe that uh, all requests will likely be able to be satisfied um, this year, even though we kind of have two tranches. Um, traditionally, there's been an un underspending towards the end of the year, um, you know, just based on different prices coming in at different pieces, as well as with this first initiative that I really congratulate Sarah on doing around trying to uh, leverage um, Co, uh, co reps to um, try to engage in, the, in the, their communities. Um, it's the first year of this uh, initiative, and it's likely that there'll be underspending in it as uh, people sort of uh, ramp up and so to those pieces. So I think this is a well positioned budget and um, can uh, likely accommodate all the requests uh, by the end of the year. Thank you. Go ahead, Katie. Uh, I think I was responding to a specific comment that was on the floor that now has slipped my mind. Um, but yeah, uh, just to the point that Andrew made, it does uh, what is here does um, accommodate and cover all of the requests that have come forward from the working group. So it would be, um, I think, a, a very good 
action for us to uh, be able to put these requests and to do it at a time there where it leaves us, you know, the next few months to implement um, and and then come back to review what is uh, remaining if there is underspending. So. OK, thank you. Let's OK, thanks. The only thing and I don't know if we can is this a PDF uh, just to, so that when it gets posted um, that we show the breakdown inside the motion. That's the, so that there's no confusion with the membership, especially it's a recorded vote. Absolutely. Uh, I will yeah. make the edits. I can yeah. make that edit and uh, and send before the end of the meeting this evening. If you need okay. it sooner than that, just give me a few moments yes. to make that adjustment. Just so that the no 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 problem. Um, so that membership sees because uh, we have to do a recorded vote because of the um, it's a governance rec uh, working group. Um, and, no problem. Thank you. Any Michelle, would you be able to or uh, um, uh, put it back to where the motion is? Thanks, Katie and Sarah. Okay. So, um, based on um, a on April variance report, so this motion is 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 thinking ahead, um, and waiting until April. Is this why this? Uh, so it, is this a second motion? Uh, based on the April variance report, if there is underspending, we like two separate to... two separate motions, correct? Well, it was one motion to approve the 13,400 uh, as just discussed, plus for a commitment to come back and review um, to see if there is, uh, will be any remaining funds available to commit to the three remaining requests. And two requests, which we'll hear more about tonight, but also uh, to put an allocation towards strategic planning if we are looking at a strategic planning meeting towards the end of the year. Oh, okay. so it, was, so, uh, it was really one motion uh, for approval for just a commitment to revisit that uh, spending after the April variance. Okay, another, mo okay then. Um, and just to come back for this, but the motion that we're looking at for this, the actual spending you're gonna we're gonna put it at the bottom of uh, just above the base on a preference that you're gonna edit right and then based on okay then so members understand that um, it is not a straight spending on the five thousand for communication uh, and it's not the straight five thousand for hiring a consultant or you're not agreeing um, well. For the strategic planning, that is really important um, team, the working group. So, but it's to come back and ensure it gets back on the agenda to discuss. Is that correct, Katie and Sarah? Yep. Okay. All right then. All right then. So, any more questions um, before we go to a recorded vote? And um, as just uh, know, there are new members. Um, there are um, three ways that a member can vote um, in favor of the request, not in favor. That's all you need to say in favor, not in favor. Or if you do not want to vote, to say abstain, okay? In favor, not in favor, or abstain. One, um, vote per ward. So um, if we have uh, both co reps on for our ward, decide amongst yourself who will be responding on behalf of your ward and um, and um, taking consideration that you're representing your ward and it's a recorded vote. And um, that's all you need to say in favor when your ward number is called or not in favor or abstain. Okay. And uh, membership, how much percent that we need to have in order for it to be um, deemed uh, passed? Or is it PCCO? It's a simple uh, majority, 50% plus, 50 plus one. 50% plus one, okay, of who's uh, within, that's of, of um, attendees right now, okay. Yeah. Sorry, okay, and um, who, uh, PCCO, who's normally, would normally um, 
do um, do the recording, check it. I think it's a uh, PCO. You will be doing that as a third party, correct? Through you, Chair. I'll be recording the votes okay. as you call them. Thank you very much. And um, I, it's not in order on my Zoom, so I'm just going to call out ward by ward. I'm not sure there may be a ward that may not have any rep, but I'm just going to go ward one to ward twenty-two. Okay. Um, ward one. Ward one in favor. Ward two. Ward two in favor. Would you be able to say your name from the ward one and ward two? Uh, when you're saying who is representing, please say who the name and the rep and the ward that you're from. So sorry, let's start again. Ward one, sorry. Ward one, Aaron in okay. favor. Okay. Ward okay. two, Sarah in favor. Good, thank you. Ward three. Anyone from Ward 3 membership? No. Okay, hearing none. Okay, Ward 4. Ward 4, Tamasha Grant in favor. Okay. Ward 5. Ward 5 Ward is currently vacant. Ward five. It's vacant. Oh, <laughs> Ward 6. In favor. You say who's from Ward 6 saying they're in oh, favor? Sorry. It's uh, Mercy Charles in favor. Okay. Ward 7. N none? No one, no one from Ward 7. Um, ward 8. No, no one from Ward 7. Ward 8. Ward 8 in favor. Uh, ward 8 is who's saying Ward 8? Just need to say your name. Katie. Okay, just Katie for recorded. Yeah, yes. just for recorded votes. Okay. <laughs> um, ward nine. Ward nine, Melanie, in favor. Okay. Um, anyone from Ward ten? No. I know that um, Ward ten, Bruce had sent his regrets. Not feel is under the weather. So if you could put that down as an email. Ward eleven. In favor, Janice. Janice. Okay. Ward 12. Abstain, Felicia, due to the lateness of the report. Okay, so Ward 12, abstain. Felicia, yep. okay. okay. And it's Leisha, L-I-E. Leisha, -E. Leisha, my apologies, Leisha. It's okay, thank so you. So you have, yeah, okay, Ward 12, abstain. Ward 13. Ward 13, June, in favor. June, okay. Ward 14. In favor, it's Jenny. Jenny, okay. Ward 15. Ward 15, Yusuf, in favor. Okay, Ward 16. No, Ward 16. Okay, thank you. We have a ward 17. Ward 17, Tanya Ono in favor. Okay, Tanya, good. Ward 18. Ward 18, Seema Mitchell in favor. Okay, Ward 19. Ward 19, Musa Alu in favor. Ward 20. Ward 20, Chris uh, in favor. Okay. Ward 21. Ward 21, Azim in favor. Okay. Ward 22, do we have any reps? Oh, yes. Ward, Ward 22, 22, Nadia in favor. I apologize, Nadia. And our CLG, um, is he on today? Not yet. Okay. Um. I will go to the PCCO team, who's a third party team that's uh, supporting this vote. Um, please let me know if the, if, it, if it has, the motion has passed. Through you, Chair, the motion is passed. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So um, the motion has passed, um, the budgetary item. Thank you, Katie and Sarah. Um, is there another? Update, Katie, and we're good. Not... Uh, the there are no other updates. Everything else discussed is uh, included in the report for your okay. review. Okay, and the only thing that I see that has to get a uh, while you're updating the while you're updating the report that the co-chair um, Sherrick was also in attendance at that uh, working group. And if you could just edit that um, in your attendance zine okay 
as well. Okay. Sorry, Katie. Thank you. I'll make the okay. Edit. Okay, no problem. And uh, we're on to school school council support. Uh, it's a written report. Uh, and there's also a motion. Um, is this the motion that was brought through? Um, yep. Budget. Okay, then. Yeah. So then we have to. Uh, is it okay if we? Um, edit that there's no motion adjust the agenda because the motion was brought through through the budget team on your behalf okay okay that's great so, okay yeah as long no as problem. the motion was brought up and documented yeah. we're yeah. good to go and yeah. i think uh and pcco office already mentioned um some of some of the agenda on the task but you guys already received the report so unless people have any questions uh both myself and melanie are here to answer it but we don't want to go through redundant of reading everything that everybody no, will receive. No problem. Yeah, just to make yeah. it easy. No okay. problem. So go, so um, Michelle, would you be able to, again, um, once Kadeen submits, and um, if you can edit, um, amend the agenda to remove the motion from school council, because there was no actual motion for them. The motion was part of budget, and it's already been written so that we can fix that up. Uh, uh, chair, uh, mm -hmm. point of clarification, I do see a second motion coming from school council. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, is there a second motion? Uh, through you, Chair, uh, the communications that were shared, I believe school council had a consultation uh, motion. Sarah, would that be yep, correct? That is, that is included on the budget. I didn't see, we didn't see that part of it. Was did Show us where, on, let's show the team. The consultation for um, if not we can bring it forward it's not a problem it's it's received on everybody's format but we'll okay. read it forward okay um if it's part of the is if it's part if it isn't on the under operational affecting that we don't know if um Katie would like to read that because it's under the budget or is it under school council um am i missing no something? i think the second motion that is uh being discussed right now is specific to the school, school council oh, okay support thank, thank you because i'm missing okay go right ahead um um sarah and melanie if you have the motion can we see where the motion is um yeah we send it to you guys you want to bring it forward so? yeah um yeah Ask yeah if you now. can put it on the to share so that everybody can see it it'll be easier mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, it's on. It's on the screen now. Um, so. Yeah. Um, so it says is in regards to this is something that's been going on for the last ten years. It's nothing new. And as a school council, whenever we meet up in the working group, school council support working group, it always keeps bringing forward. In fact, we've had also within the school council working group, uh, certain emails that we were not even aware that members have signed up for. And unlike other governance working group, uh, school council support working group is not, which means it's open to all parents uh, to be members and to join in. Uh, for that reason, we just want to bring up the continuation to make sure to get this resolved. Uh, in reality, and when we spoke to also the communication working group, uh, we've heard that there might have been a predated April uh, motion that wasn't presented. Hence why, and um, and a lot of the school council members wanted, since they're new, and a lot of PIAC members are new in regards to this continued in issues, uh, we did put forward this motion, but we also are partnered up with the working group for the communication in SEMA in regards that depending on the budget, which one will be going first. But this, again, this is an issue that should have been addressed by TDSB, and it shouldn't be on the plate of PIAC since this is an email and it actually hinders once again engagement and getting parents involved because if you can get hold of the parents we can get them involved one of the example being we have an, a big event coming up hosted by PIAC and yet we don't have all the parents emails informations so this one is pretty much having maybe an external consultant look into and finding out what the best practices and how to resolve this issue once and for all. Um, did you, uh, I'm sorry, did you end up reading the, the motion itself, be it resolved? Did you read it or you just spoke? Can you actually read the motion if you have not done so, Sarah? 
Uh, the motion is there. You want me to read it? Yes, word, please. Word it's it? recorded. It's uh, uh, actually no, it's not a recorded vote because mm -hmm. it's uh, oh no, but it's it's funding, so it has to be a recorded vote. It's a budgetary item. Um, yes, please read it because we have to vote on this. It's money. Okay, let me open that. It's on the screen. Be resolved that. Do you need me to read it for you? Yeah, you can read it for me. Go okay. Ahead. So this has been this motion has been brought uh, for by school council working group. And it will be a recorded vote once it goes because it's um it's affecting budget and um um and open the floor uh, after. So be it resolved that the school council working group strongly recommends the immediate engagement of an external consultant with expertise in communication technology to investigate and address the existing email issues within the TDSB, specifically focusing on improving parent and caregiver engagement. Be it further resolved that an allocated budget of $5,000 be approved for the engagement of this consultant, prioritizing the enhancement of communication channels vital for parent and caregiver involvement and the success of future TDSB events, workshops, and initiatives. The rationale for this, the communication breakdown stemming from the current email issue, significantly impacts the engagement of parents and caregivers within the TDSB community. By investing in an external consultant and allocating a budget of $5,000, we aim to restore effective communication channels, ensure increased participation in events, workshops, and activities vital for a strong educational partnership between TDSB and its stakeholders. Um, Sarah, I guess you brought that um, you brought the motion forward, and I'd like to know who, correct? Just to reconfirm. Uh, this motion was brought up by the school council working group. No, 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 you you know, I mean, you as a rep, yeah, you brought absolutely. it in on behalf. Yeah, so yeah, Sarah, yeah. okay, and uh, who would like to second the motion before we open the floor? I can second that, Tamasha Grant, word four. Okay, then. And now, um, now that um, the motion has been second, we can um, open up the floor for discussion. Uh, Zina, can you help me as well, if anything? Okay, so go ahead, Zina. Let me know who's first, second. Again, not sure if they're legacy hands. I do see Andrew's hand, Acadians, and Tanya's. Not sure if I forgot anybody yet. Hold on one moment before I say anything Anything else. in the chat? Mine is legacy. So we'll go with... Uh, oh, sorry, I apologize. 11. And then I also, Sharon, I also see Janice as well. Janice, okay. And Andrew seems to have lowered his hand, so um, a new, new order, order of, uh, would be Tanya, and then I have Janice. Go ahead, Tanya, Ward 17. Thank you. Um, I just wanted clarification on this motion. Um, it's a motion to hire a consultant to tell us where our communication breakdown is, or they are going to suggest a route or network of better communication or are they going to implement it it's not very specific about what five thousand dollars will be used towards um it's just to hire a consultant so i don't know i don't know what it's not specific enough i don't think to um to have this motion forward okay okay um Thank you. So Ward 11, Janice, and then um, Susan, what ward are you with again? Sorry, I apologize. And welcome back. Ward 12. Yeah. Would you be able to um, just put your ward yeah. number? Sure. Okay. Yeah, just for attendance as well. And welcome. Good to see you. Uh, go ahead, Janice. Um, yeah, I have a couple of questions. One is, how did you arrive at the number of $5,000? Did you put out... Um, RFPs or or um, do you have a company in mind or uh, and, and also to Tanya's point, what will the five thousand dollars be covering? Um, also, is this not within the purview of the PCEO and the services that they provide uh, PIAC? Yeah, those are my questions. Um, uh, Sarah, Sarah, Melanie, do you want to respond? And if we need a PCCO to kind of answer uh, anything here, do you want to ask to get everybody's question and then we can respond it at once? 
that will make it easier. Okay, and then, okay, so you have that document and then the next, Susan? Oh no, sorry, yeah, Susan, yeah, Susan, go ahead. Yeah, Word 12. I, um, so I, just questioning this ask because, well, I've been away, so I did not realize uh, the issues and I'm just getting up to date, so not really comfortable with everything, but the, the idea of the consultations with for for um for parents, I think TDSB already did it because I remember being part of a, a like a a focus group. And Michelle, maybe you can uh, answer this question better. But I know that it wasn't just like PIAC, but there was PIAC reps uh, there, and there were also parents from other councils. The parents were just invited to come in and speak on communication issues. From TDSB, from like I mean, from the board to parents and things like that, and already there should be a good, big, and good report out there somewhere. And I'm not sure why that isn't being given to us as well. Like we've never see the results of these reports. So spending this money, I don't see that as being um, practical, in the sense that we never get the results back in, in a proper time or. Uh, in a way that we can use it to do better. Um, I'm just wondering if there is something that the board themselves should be doing better uh, rather than spending this money for an external consultant. Um, just to clarify, thank you guys. Uh, thank you, Susan. Just to we clarify for people that are new, um, this is under the budget for PIAC. I hope we understand that, right? And this is either money to be used or not to be used. Uh, one of the reasons that this was brought up for school council is again, the lack of engagement due to the, the fact of the email situation, right? The fiasco. Uh, the question that Janice from Ward 11, uh, Janice, correct if I'm wrong, in regards to what would be the consultant, that's again with the guidelines of discussion, we can further discuss in detail portion. We're just saying that to put allocation money for that, to resolve that, because I get the frustration, I myself in the same position, hence why in the school council working group, we're bringing as much motion as possible to resolve the issue and get the engagement of school councils and parents involvement. Hence why we're saying, let's put that budget aside, how it's gonna be allocated and how it's gonna be determined, we can discuss that further later on. Again, I don't think so. This budget is not part of the TDS, uh, and we brought this forward. This should have been resolved by TDSB and not PIAC. Okay, thanks. Um, Ward one, Erin. I'm sorry, my my husband just got my ear there, so that might have been answered in Sarah's response there. But um, I was just wondering if the TDSB is actually receptive to outside consultant advice. If maybe Michelle Monroe can answer that one, I don't know. If um, we put forward recommendations from a third party, would the TDS be actionate? Um, Michelle, go ahead, and then I can, uh, and then go ahead, Michelle. For yeah. you, Chair, uh, my office cannot speak for our IT department, uh, which holds the purview over accounts, activation of accounts or deactivation of accounts. Uh, what I will ask PIAC is because if you are looking at a consultant to work with the TDSB, uh, it would be helpful if we grant that department the opportunity to get a sense of what you're proposing uh, to explore the feasibility of what that may look like. Um, uh, prior to you making the decision to spend, because I assume the consultation would consultant would have to be working very closely with our IT staff to come up with a solution that will meet and adhere to the TDSB's infrastructure, or or maybe not. I, I'm not quite sure what you are hoping, but I would assume that any communications that will require the TDSB would have to have be consulted in terms of. Our, our IT department, and I can't speak on their behalf this evening, uh, we would have to bring this information to them to be able to do so. Um, thank and, you. Okay, yes. and so, so um, I would like to go to, so Erin, is that a legacy hand before Sarah speaks? 
Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Okay, Janice, is that a legacy hand before Sarah speaks? So, so she no, can get it's all the new hand. Okay, go ahead, Sarah. We're gonna get, and then you can be able to speak on all of it. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Janice. Great water level. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I, I mean, just just a comment. I think it would be uh, best to see more details about what five thousand dollars is going to get us also yeah. uh to michelle's point, you know having an outside vendor same exact almost would you be able to somebody's on mute can word 15 can you mute what are, are michelle are you able to mute word 15 for us wasn't you can you word or can you mute thank you so go ahead, Sarah Janice. I'm <laughs> <Sorry. muting. laughs> Um, Yeah, so I, I'd like to see more details on what, what $5,000 is gonna get us. I think we also have to consider, you know, if we were a school council and we were spending this money, we would need to use a board approved vendor. You know, is that a consideration in this situation as well? And I, I also think that, um, there needs to be some clarification and, and, and consultation, as Michelle mentioned, with the uh, TDSB IT department. Um, and with so many unanswered questions, um, I think it would be better to put this motion off to a later date when we can have um, um, the answers to these questions. Just my opinion. Okay, uh, thank you. Go ahead, um, Sarah. Uh Okay, so two things. Again, I just want to clarify a few things. The PIAC budget is PIAC, as Michelle Monroe mentioned, correct, to be utilized for PIAC initiative. Do you need Michelle to respond to that, Sarah? Well, it comes from the PCCO office, right? The PIAC. Oh, you, you guys go check on Zeno sharing, you know. Uh, if I may, yeah. Chair. Go ahead, you, yeah. Chair? the ministry allocates PX the funds the board holds the funds and in our district what we do is is we come to you for you to outline how your funds will be spent and we we then implement that accordingly okay okay so, okay. so, so for uh, before reason, Sarah, Sarah before you go um okay. I will also add to it okay and Zina as well so um just for the membership, um, yes, I wanted Michelle to start, and then and then the membership. We are the gatekeeper for the funds, and um, we have to think strongly. And I'm not, and I'm not in or not. I am just being neutral. I just have to just let you know, um, especially new members, um, that if you, and it's not just gatekeeper, the funding. So we are the one that have to, as a committee say how we spend the the meat the um how we spend the, the money by our votes okay so we vote on it and then that would be the, the the majority and then that's where the the funding will go just like how we just did the vote on the other spending from budget from operational effectiveness that's when we say we're the gatekeeper so our, it's our budget or our accountability okay um however um when we do spend we have to ensure that if we do get something, um, it is not asking and then nothing comes out of that fund. So if uh, there's no final line, you know, all who's gonna make the money is an outside party. If the board is not gonna be receptive to the, the recommendation, then it end up coming back on hold. So um, I just wanted to let you all know that. And then um, Sarah, go ahead. And um, just so we all know, and then okay. if it's, yeah, go ahead, Sarah, go ahead. Okay, okay so the confusion, and, and we accept also the member's request for more clarification of the motion. We have no problem with that to give it more clarification is just, again, we bring it forward for the consultation is for solutions of this issue with the email that has been going on for the last 10 years. When both myself and, and Melanie was selected as a co-lead, this concern has been going on again for 10 years. We can continue to debate this as members and leave it for another 10 years, or we can just start implemented put it in in the budget and discuss it more in detail how the consultation and how the process is going to be put in place. Now, again, I stated earlier when we spoke with the communication working group, 
we did say that we can put on defer our motion a school council motion to get apologize my phone is calling to get the school council communication motion put forward as they requested from last year you see what i mean so in that regards just in case if we're out of budget but when it comes in, when it comes to the um, sorry, um, Sarah, I'm going to stop for a sec because I don't know if somebody is in our meeting that is not allowed to be here. I see a Zoom oh. user. Zoom user uh, is Leisha Earl. She's Word 12. I just put it in the chat. OK. Oh, thank just you. Change your name because she's on her phone. All right. Oh, perfect. OK, then. So she's on her phone and we can reach yeah. out to her. Word 12, yeah. Lisa. Manchu, sorry, Leisha. Um, um, Ma Manchu, are you able to just um, change? Okay, and just say Alicia, so we know we can have a respect for her there. Thank you. Sorry, okay. sorry, um, sorry, Sarah. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, I just want to know if it's some sort of gatekeeping within the budget component. I understand, and we have no problem. The schools council committee to defer uh, for this motion later on with more detail, but we're just putting forward because one of the things that we've uphold in our members group is to make sure that any concerns that our members bring forward we bring it forward to the PAC representative right um, again if there's more consultation and the members feel that this is unnecessary and the 5,000 budget can be allocated somewhere else I haven't seen it how where else um, I don't mind going back to engagement for sure and outreach so be it and if more detail is required, we have no problem of giving more detail and deferring this motion to later on. But again, the reason we brought it up is an, an ongoing continuation for 10 years. And okay. if TDSB and PCCO office would like to take it over and bring it forward a resolution, a problem as some of the members have mentioned through the TDSB, we have no problem of just pretty much deleting this whole motion. Okay. Um... Thank you, um, Sarah. And um, so would you like uh, officially to take it off the table now and bring it forward another time? Um, as you said, um, you will draw the motion at this time? Uh, we can we can defer this motion okay. Uh, okay. for the next meeting. Absolutely. We okay. But so, we'll bring it back for the next time. So what I'm going to, I'm going to um, urge, um, this is a serious situation, um, TDSB staff, and and for it to take our brave parents, um, you know, we are volunteer parents to come and say, you know what, um, we're willing, they were willing to take five thousand dollars out of a small budget just to try and help the engagement going forward. It is something that has been ongoing and is stressed ten years. And um, the associate director, you're here. If you are associate director Salmon, being a senior staff within the group, uh, is associate director still here? No, it's not. Uh, he he had to. He, okay, he right. no, bit, no, but we're no, still here. We're no still problem. Here. Then now we're we'll different to executive <laughs> superintendent Robinson Chan Chan Robinson. I don't want to, you know, learning center one and two. So I will go Robin Robinson because that's learning center one and Chan Learning Center too as executive superintendent. Um, we are asking and um, that this be resolved so that um, our parents can um, do the work that we, we, uh, we, we volunteer to do and pro provide proper advice to the board. And um, this, this particular situation should not be an advice to the board. Okay, this is not what we are here for. If we we can't give proper advice, if we are trying to get um, a, a special administrative IT situation resolved, that's not what we are here for. We're here to advise you to help support the youths and the parents. Please, sir. So, and ma'am, can you please um, ask and encourage your team? Please do not sweep, uh, uh, brush this away. I'm not saying you did, but ten years. I know you have you weren't here the last 10 years. Please, I'm asking. Our parents have spoken. OK. OK, yeah, thank you. Through through the chair, uh, we will uh, take this obviously back and we will come back with uh, a response. Uh, it may not be comprehensive, but a response uh, at the up next uh, uh, meeting, next PIAC meeting. Thank you. OK, thank you. So the response with with a solution. That's what we're looking for, sir. Would that be uh, would that be doable? 
we will do our best and we will come together. Uh -huh. Can I just add one little thing in here? Go um, ahead. I want to thank everyone for the really important conversation. And this is amazing the conversation. It gets brought up. We talk about it. So thank you for everyone for bringing that and your honesty and your vulnerability, actually, to talk about this. Um, but as well, a moment ago, I, I think I was not alone in seeing, um, talking about technology, uh, rectangles on the screen. I'm not quite sure how we can remove those, but I'm almost concerned if we have another item up on the screen that our membership won't be able to possibly see fully what's being presented. So I'm not sure if that's a back end thing with the with Zoom tonight, but if that can be fixed possibly, that'd be great. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. I don't see anything on the screen. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So okay. Um just see the agenda now. I haven't seen the agenda. What's next? Um, I think it's the next one is uh, communications. Seema? Yes. Um, Go ahead. Communications, I apologize. Uh, we've been pretty swamped with uh, the conference uh, planning, but um, our updates include we've been prepping uh, materials for the conference, so we did it in house this year and um, it's been great. And uh, we've made some pretty big progress. Uh, just trying to get uh, the stuff onto our TDSB um, partner sites like the, the Hub and the Homepage car Carousel. Um, the other update is our Slack pilot. We deem it to be a success. And for any members who are not there, hint, hint, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. Our, okay. new, our new members, um, we can certainly help you guys um, during the strategic planning and orientation session to get you up. Slack is free. It's a great platform to communicate in real time and get work done. Um, I'm sure many of us here on the call can attest to it. And um, you know, we're right now we're working with um, school council support on um, getting the t some some updates done to TSP pages, for example, like the school pages for in the whole hub updating our logo. And uh, that's it for now. We'll probably have more updates coming up. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, in the interest of time, I'm going to ask if we could extend oh, um, another five minutes. Uh, five minutes we need. Zina, because we're past the 9.15. Right, so we officially need someone to make the motion. And make the motion to, to yeah, 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 but I'm saying nine, it's another 15 minutes maybe. Hopefully we don't stay that long, but just to not have to ask, keep asking, remotion, remotion, remotion. Asking someone if we can, uh, we're looking to oh, extend our. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, the, um, we don't, do we need a recorded vote? No. No, we can move on as long as you have we someone. We can move to, on um, to a second. All right. My apologies, uh, Chair. Could you just, I didn't hear who second the motion. Sorry, Ward 1, Aaron seconded. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. And we, Okay. Um membership. Um yes. Jenny Janice. Yes, Sharon. Yes. Double J. You, um, what? <laughs> J squared. Yeah, so J -squared. I'll just quickly quickly go over um the uh, membership report that we did submit. Uh, we would like to welcome our new members and um where are my new the new members? Oh, Newly elected members. So in Ward 6, uh, Crystal Stewart has uh, been re-elected and Mercy Charles is new to Ward 6. So welcome, uh, Crystal and Mercy. And in Ward 19, we have Shabnam Sheikh and Musa Anwar Alu, and they are new to PIAC. Welcome. And we're so happy to have um, our four 
new uh, members with us. So that brings presently our membership up to 38 in total. So that's 37 PIAC reps plus one um, community liaison rep. Um, presently we have, yes, it's getting, it's getting um, um, close to that 45. Um, currently we have um, seven PIAC, PIAC uh, vacancies. Um, we have members with expired terms. We have 15, but everybody's still serving and hopefully we'll continue to do so until their trustees um, are able to run elections. Uh, we don't have any new expiries coming up for February and we don't have any ward elections that I'm aware of coming up. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is just hand it over to Jenny and she's gonna take you through a couple of um, items. All right, hi everyone. So I'm just gonna quickly let everyone know that we've updated the PIAC declaration of membership form. So you guys should all be receiving a direct link to fill this out. Um, so PIAC members are asked to complete this form at the beginning of their term. Uh, so any new reps um, as they're elected throughout the school year will be asked to fill this out. Um, and then we'll be doing it again at the beginning of each new school year. Um, because we haven't done it this year, um, we've actually only had two responses so far. Uh, we're gonna have everyone um, fill this form out, so at least we have it on record, because uh, we are required to have um, to verify that the parent is a parent of a, a student who is enrolled at the school of the TDSB and includes a guardian as defined in section one of the act. Um, so the use and disclosure of any personal information um, for this purpose um, are expressly authorized under the authority of sections 58 and regulation 612, sections 33 and 34. Um, and uh, will be just kept for us to just make sure that everyone who is a rep is uh, able to be so. Um, and the only other thing we wanted to bring up to everyone's attention um, is for those who are unaware or of those who were hesitant in the past and may want to uh, join is that we do have a WhatsApp group. Um, this is for like a peer-to-peer -peer support. So if you are interested in um, being added to this WhatsApp group, just let Janice or myself know and we will uh, get you connected to that. Um, so Janice, I uh, continuing or should I? Nope, I believe I that's that... all we have to say. And I've posted uh, the declaration form link and I've also posted the WhatsApp group chat. And when you uh, sign up for the WhatsApp group chat, because I know you all want to, um, <laughs> please put your name, <laughs> identify yourself so we know who's in there. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I'm asking, um, um, not only any uh, if your terms once your term expires or you get reelected it's a new term so when jenny and janice mentioned um new members it's you know your term is uh although you're returning you're actually newly elected because it's a new term so i'm asking if yeah. everyone can fill that out uh fill out the form michelle i'm asking is there any way you could uh send that um form out from the pcco in case okay. some members are missing um and also is is it a form as well a google form to to join peer to peer um jenny janice and if you have that form to send to pco no that's a is this a link it's just a link okay all right okay then yeah. no problem so For is the there a way to one. send is there any way to send that as well if they're interested in, so that um if anyone that, that's not on can get that link as well yeah both of them all are right. currently in the chat all right but there are some members that may have not He's not here yeah. as well. So if he yeah. needs to get them, that he'll be able to access some from the chat. Okay then. All right then. Okay. Um, so I'd like to formally welcome uh, my new PIAC uh, co-reps and and say welcome back our returning co-reps and hope to see you all on Saturday as well. Okay. Um, Zina, do you want to say a word? I'm going to say I'm going to echo that. I'm excited to meet all our new co reps and actually be able to visit with and court and collaborate with all our veteran um, co reps. I think everyone has a lot to share and has a lot to contribute, regardless of the spaces and places you're from. So, looking 
forward to all of that excitement, we'll say. And I also want to put it out there um, to every co-rep, Zena and I are willing to come to your ward. We can't just walk into your ward. We have to be invited to your ward based on our role. But we're willing to come to your school council to say hello, talk about, uh, help you talk about uh, PIAC. We're, we're willing to come to PIAC ward, ward meetings, but it's your area and we don't want to just walk in. Although I'm a parent of Ward 4, I can't just walk into Ward 4. I have to get permission from my ward reps. So we're, but we're saying that we're extending the olive arms that we are, we're willing, okay? Please, um, if you would like to have us, thanks. Um, strategic planning, uh, Zina, just quickly say, oh, events, events, sorry, go ahead, Nadia, events. Thanks, Sharon, um, and welcome to our new members and congratulations, Crystal. Um, first, I just want, so unfortunately, I was not able to get a written report out on time. I will definitely submit that once time permits, um, but I'm gonna just speak to it orally. Uh, so registration opened up today, Eventbrite. Um, that, so everyone go ahead, take a look, sign up, register. We need volunteers, uh, anyone that's interested, and I urge all the reps, if you possibly can, please attend or please help out and volunteer. Um, and you can see Bruce for that. Unfortunately, he's ill today and is not in our meeting, but you can re reach out to him um, and he'll definitely be more than happy to take you on and, and give you a assigned task. Um, also, if anybody's interested um, for their kids that might be in secondary school that's looking for hours, they can also, um, we're also looking for student volunteers, and you could see Jessica for that. She um, she will be able to assist and provide the forms for uh, their school to fill out, and then they would just come in hand with their um, their hours, their forms to be filled out as well uh, the day at the event, I believe. And um, so um, I'm not sure, but sorry. Um, Michelle, would you be able to speak um, once I introduce, I'm, I'm gonna mention Christy. So Christy was um, allocated to us through the TDSB. <clears throat> she's, um, she's actually a old rep from, a PIAC rep, and she's now an employee of the TDSB, and she's helping with the events. So I'll let um, Michelle just give you a quick introduction to Christy, because I don't think she's on this call today. Uh, through you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Nadia. No, she is not. That's not part of the agreement. In light of the fact that we've not been able to uh, fail the vacancy of your commit of the committee assistant, Latha John, who you know has moved on, and we had filled it. But then that second individual moved on. Uh, we're trying to secure someone else in the interim. I just needed to find some interim supports to assist you with your event planning uh, to be sure that it could be moved. And uh, within uh, Christie's role within the board, she supports these types of activities at the trustee level. And she was willing to offer some hours to support your event. And that's specifically what she will be supporting until your event happens or until I hire uh, the staff that will be able to continue the role. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle, and thank you for allocating her to us. She's been um, amazing and quite resourceful and helpful. And um, so, and then also we've been working with communication, as Seema has mentioned, and we've been collaborating with school council because the event, uh, for those that are new, it's about um, appreciating school councils, um, the event is for school councils. It's to help empower them, help educate them, help support them. And also it's an opportunity for parents to attend and have engagement, meet with um, TDSB staff, meet with us most, you know, most specifically as well too. So they can be familiar with who uh, PIAC is and what we do as well too. And um, I think that's everything. 
anyone from the working group, if I've missed anything, please feel free to jump in or chairs. If I've missed anything, please. Um, okay. uh, sorry, Nadia, this is Janice Board 11. I just have a question. Um, yes. How many students uh, are you looking for for uh, we, uh, volunteer hours? Um, we don't have a number on that, but um, yeah, we don't we don't have a number on that right now. That is a good question. I can um, talk to Jessica and see what would be what the tasks would be for this year because this event is a little bit different as it was in the past where we had separate workshops and we would always have like one or two students presence within those workshops. So um, the workshops would normally be like 15, like anywhere from 11 to 15 workshops. So, um, you know, having student body there to help the facilitators was always something that we all we looked for plus set up. So this time around, it's different. It's just one big workshop that's going to be in the auditorium. And um, every so that way, all school councils are or all attendees are getting the same information and they don't have to worry about, oh, I really wanted to sign up for this workshop, but I really want to go to this workshop. So they have everything all in one under one umbrella. Um, so, okay. yeah, that's a really good question. I can take that back to Jessica and we can figure out how many numbers that we're looking for exactly. Great. Thank you. No problem. Thanks, Janice, for the uh, question. OK. I'm going to th uh, thank you, Nadia, and I wanted to say a couple of things about the um, the uh, the event. And I, Nadia spoke about it in our co-chair report, and I encourage this is our last official meeting before our big event, and then after we have to reflect after the event, and hopefully we all can be part of that reflection based on our observation or our, our, our lived experience at the event. I can, I'm very happy and I can't wait to, to see all of you at the event and showcase our talent and our volunteer, our hard work that we do. Um, if anyone, there's a lot of new members, War, um, Bruce is from Ward 10. And if you're unable to connect with Bruce through Ward 10, you can uh, reach out to PCCO of Michelle Monroe and then she can do the connection or um, to um, either Jessica or Bruce, Jessica is Ward 4 rep. Co-rep, sorry. And also, um, just we have to be mindful uh, based on equity because now we're getting very big in terms of, it was when we first started the school, vol the student volunteer, it was at a smaller scale and this, a lot of students helped us online with IT stuff, but now we have to be more equitable and um, we have to um, actually work with the PCCO to get that out to the guidance department and, um, and put it out there and, have a number and say these are the number of students we're looking for to see if any other students within the board would love the opportunity to get some volunteer hours uh, based on our community outreach. Because at the end of the day, every single student that's a, we're representing them and and their parent and their ward. So we represent them. So we're trying to see if uh, any other students are willing. Um, but uh, we're going to work. Uh, um, Nadia work with the um, Michelle's team because at the end of the day, uh, sh that team is the one that's gonna validate the hours. So work with them to see how it is, but just to be fair and equitable access for the rest of the uh, high school students looking for hours, in addition to any, uh, any ones that we have, right? Just as a FYI, okay? Um, is that correct, Michelle? Because I wanna make sure I'm not stepping, is that correct? Uh, yes, Chair, thank you. Okay, thanks, okay. Um, and um, Zina, uh, Anything else you want to add before, because you're the coach here attached to events? Anything you want to add? Sure. Um, I want to actually congratulate the working group. I know this is the last meeting we're going to have before the event itself. Um, they've made some changes. They're being really dynamic about how the event's going to work out. So kudos to everybody who's been contributing along the way. Um, and I think everyone's already said it, but the one thing really great about this event is the exchange and the engagement between PIAC reps and the greater parent caregiver community. Um, that alone tends to be a wonderful moment that takes place. Um, and what's that old phrase? Many hands on deck make lighter work. So I know at this particular event, and I'm sure Nadia alluded to it as well, is it's not just about the day of, it's also about the night before. Um, legendary pizza parties have been had, so to speak. Well, we put up signs that direct people to where they need to go um, and make sure that everything's in place. So it's an amazing event the next day. So definitely reach out to Nadia, reach out to Jessica, reach out to Michelle um, to see what you can do to help out. 
And uh, yeah, sorry. And don't, don't forget, Nadia, to ask about Friday, the help that you may need the Friday before, OK? So if or it's, unless you have the membership already um, for that volunteer day, the Friday before, traditionally. Yeah. We've um I'm spoke I spoke to Bruce and um and to our mentioned to okay, Jessica, what? yes. Okay. So all right, so it's already we didn't we don't need additional membership to help support on Friday, but we need the mass out on Saturday, is that correct? No, we do need help for the, the Friday as well too. So yes. So um just giving it a platform to speak to our parents. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So also from um five to nine PM if anyone can help with setup, that would be great as well too. And then that also goes to students, student volunteers, adult volunteers, membership um, volunteers, and so forth. So um, yeah, and I just also wanna thank the working groups, all the working groups that's been collaborating, um, most importantly, uh, communication, school council, and uh, events. You know, we've been working long and hard um, every week and, you know, it's we go until like close to 10 p.m. or beyond 10 p.m., I should say. So I just really want to say thank you for that. And uh, one of our new members also, he jumped right in, uh, Musa from Ward 19, to help us with um, with some advice in processing of uh, food with between halal and kosher. So he. Um, jumped right in and, and he helped. So I just want to say thank you and thank you to the PCCO office as well and um, to the chairs and, and Andrew um, as well too and all community members. Thank you. Tanya, thank you. So I am um, the, the bus coordinator. So if anything, I've been a bus coordinator for a while. We started out in PIAC. And um, I also supported the, the, the board as a whole to support uh, coordinating the busing. And I'm looking, we're going to be looking for um, reps um, um, to help as a liaison on the bus. Also, it's a good opportunity for any reps. If you don't need to drive, you can just take the bus with your, with your ward and then you can get to know your ward um, uh, membership better. And um, I've learned a lot and I've built a good relationship, strong relationship for parents who are now willing. You two came onto the bus and feeling welcomed and um, and appreciated that uh, the additional transportation. So I'm hoping that uh, again, you reach out to Bruce, Ward 10, uh, via either PCC office or Nadia, um, just to say if you can be a bus monitor as well. Okay, thank you. So next thing, thanks, Tanya. Uh, strategic planning, um, we are, I wanted to speak about st strategic plan. Uh, we were hoping to have um, co-leads uh, for this um, governance working group had we had our, our, our meeting, um, our session on the last Saturday, but because of the weather, we, you know, again, safety issue, we want to make sure everyone's safe. So, um, it was as a placeholder. Um, so we're looking to have um, co-leads, hopefully by the time we finish our orientation, uh, who is willing to take on the role and uh, maybe provide an update on the February agenda for strategic planning, okay? So the next thing is consultation. Katie and Sarah, any, any quick notes? We're almost there for time again. Or the work in the, the report is good enough. Just let us know. Hi, good night, everybody. Katie here. Uh, Sarah, please jump in at any time. She confirmed. Uh, we just acknowledge that the the working group is in a bit of um, in a bit of transition, of course, because we have new co leads, um, have are and also moving into uh, a new period where we're just kind of thinking about how the consultations group can. Uh, engage, better engage our parent communities, um, parent and caregiver communities, or our school communities generally, and what does this mean for uh, working internally with our, our membership as well. So just a bit of a general conversation. Uh, we just like to put forward um, that the consultations working group would like to be informed of 
any upcoming consultations via the TDSB at an appropriate time. And this will en enable members to better support our engagement across the TDSB community and encourage their participation in these consultations. And uh, we also had a discussion related to the multi-year strategic plan, which we know uh, was is up for renewal and there has been some consultations around it and we are requesting an update and further information about the evaluation process of the strategic plan, um, uh, the multi-year strategic plan. Uh, this can be brought to the consultations working group for discussions and to really explore what the measurables are for this multi-year strategic plan, what are the accountability measures in place for the upcoming four year or 24 to 27 plan? Thank you. I just wanted to, thank you, Katie. Um, I just want to let the members know the reason, one of the reasons why we are running a little bit late, we had to wait, I think a good 20 minutes, if I'm not mistaken, to get quorum before we could actually start the meeting. Just so you know, so although the meeting says seven, if we don't have quorum, the required number of membership, uh, uh, Janice, please explain because I don't want the members thinking that we're running, running late because we're not organized. I just want to know that if we don't start at seven right away, then we run into the problem. So the the, the start time was actually seven twenty, I believe, or a little bit later. So Janice, please let uh, explain to the members so they are uh, um, aware of the quorum requirement again. Now that everybody's yes. in the in the chat. In the, go ahead. Yes. So um, all our meetings have a, a quorum requirement, and quorum is the minimum um, number of members that are required to be present in order for us to conduct any official business, specifically that involves passing motions. Um, so our our quorum is actually forty percent of our total membership, sitting membership. Um, and it's rounded down. So presently it's 15 members. So we actually, we were sitting at approximately 12 members for about 15 minutes and we had to wait for the last three members to come along um, so that we could actually start the meeting, have an official start to our meeting. So it's really important that everybody makes their best effort to be at the meeting. Um, Probably best to start logging on 10 minutes before, just in case there's any, you have any uh, computer glitches and to be ready to roll at 7 p.m. so that um, Sharon and Zena can start the meeting on time. Thanks. Okay. And um, thank you very much. And I think, uh, Zena, we're going to just put that as a reminder in our coach report as well. Um, and it's just for new members and all of us, all of us included. It's not a point your finger, it's just. Um, it's a requirement, it's a rule. We cannot have more staff in the meeting than members because it's our meeting, okay? So thanks. Um, any word updates? None. Um, any new business? Sorry, uh, Sharon, I'm just gonna jump in. Uh, for our ward and uh, I believe oh, it's updates, ward seven, mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. believe it's ward 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, I'm not certain um, I could be incorrect. It's a mega, it's basically a trustee um, meeting for the ward. And we're all um, we're all invited to attend. And it's right before the event. So if anybody's part of that, um, Tanya, I believe you're part of that ward as well, too. Um, and Seema and I think Musa. Um, if anyone's part of those wards, we can attend and maybe like help push the event as well too. That would be, I think, a good opportunity. And it's on, uh, sorry, I believe it's on the 29th so of January. Okay. 29th okay. of January at Big West. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, great idea. Love yeah. it. I wanted to ask. Us... I wanted to also give you, give every member, based on the ward update, a little bit of tidbit of um, insight as how the tiers work. If you go on your website, on your school website, and you look at the superintendents, the superintendents go between wards. So there's an opportunity that you could collaborate with your other wards because you have the same superintendent. Right? The trustee stays within the ward, but the superintendents go over the ward, the other ward. So if you click on the button, if you say, and you see learning network, 
it could span all the way into Scarborough, where you, where you are in terms of that. So then you will have the same superintendent that is looking after all those schools. And then we look in the school, you could have three, four wards within that, within that per, and that you could collaborate with and you see your ward rep. That's another idea how to collaborate as well. FYI. I, I do have a ward update if. Go ahead, go ahead. You were interested, okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, my trustee had an amazing uh, gathering uh, late December, right before the break. Um, so this is Ward 17 update and he invited specifically all school councils to come out and it was a great opportunity for me to uh, meet school councils that are in my I do have a co-rep as well um, and we kind of split the ward but it was an opportunity for me to meet you know a schools in her ward representation and go there was a round table and everyone got to say what their upcoming events were, what their accomplishments were, where their issues were. Um, and to summarize, um, you know, some schools were had winter performances, some schools did not have winter performances. Uh, the usual uh, fundraising events were bake sales, candy gram sales, lunchbox programs, uh, but the big one that was spoken about was fun fairs. And an interesting thing in our particular ward is that schools are starting to collaborate on what weekend they're holding their fun fairs. So there is not overlap and our community can support each school on different weekends, um, which was really cool. Um, a huge thing is that some schools have uh, league or robotics teams coming up. Um, other teams or other schools uh received the fifteen hundred dollar grant towards uh wally shaw there was a uh, three schools in particular that said they no longer had access to their finances um since the transfer to uh sorry what avita or elite what was it called sorry um parent involvement Okay. Uh, Alterna, yes, thank you. Parent involvement is super low at Buchanan uh, in particular, and there is actually, uh, I was uh, foretold yesterday that they're not a legal school council when there is one person on school council or willing to represent school council, one person with a very supportive principal, but um, engagement, uh, volunteer work and, and, and getting parents involved is quite low. Winston Churchill only has three reps on school council. Um, I've got four schools at least that showed up to this thing that do not have full councils. Um, and the major one conversation that took up a lot of time in this meeting was actually a concern, an ongoing concern about increasing security or dealing with a vaping issue okay. and school cell. So okay. that is by word update. Thank you. Um, it's very informative. Um, some of the information that you have, can you forward it to the PCCO based on the schools that you saw there was an issue? And this is exactly what us ward rep would love, the ward reps, these are the things I would love to know so that we can um, put it to school uh, PCCO to um, help support because that's part of their uh, their role as well to help support that. Um, let let um, Michelle and team Michelle know what are the different schools that are having um, that are having challenges. So to see what we can do to what they can do to help support that. Is that correct, Michelle? For you, Chair, you say yes, if I'm informed, I can reach out and connect with the superintendent uh, and possibly the admin. Thank you. I am um, any new business discussion of PIAC official business. Um, KD, did you want to just quickly go through it? Because this is the second time and then we can go. We can uh, we can add it again to the next agenda to continue the discussion. But if you want to open up the floor. Sorry, Sharon, I don't know what it is we're discussing now because we are just doing word updates. So, uh, number 10. Uh, oh, sorry. Anyone had, I, I was on to number 10. 
new business discussion of PIAC official business. Do you remember a couple of months oh, ago you had mentioned? Yes, thank you. Thank you very <laughs> much, everyone. And uh, it's the end of the night. So I really wanted to put forward and and for our members to have some level of a discussion, which won't happen tonight, on how we as a membership or as a committee um, are making space and or creating time, creating safe space to have new conversations that we have determined are or labeled what non-agenda item type discussions, breaking issues that are coming forward, uh, new um, actions or movements across the city that people would like to discuss that we're finding uh, is not really, the space does not allow for it in our general meetings. Um, and the time, mostly, we're always against time, is not necessarily available for us in our general meetings. And so when this, when these conversations are coming forward, uh, necessary conversations, often the challenging conversations are coming forward. How are we able to have these conversations um, and make time to determine what actions or what needs to be brought forward for the members for either a vote or for further discussion? And so I really am finding that to be an area where we are missing opportunities <laughs> to either learn, engage in important conversations and or our failure to have these discussions are actually creating, um, you know, or alienating some members and or creating an effect of, of um, being silenced in the in the PIAC space. So I'm, I am putting this forward um, and hoping for some direction as to how we can continue and where do we continue to have this conversation on, on how to handle. Thank, thank you, Katie. Um... This is something that uh, you could maybe start a consultation. Maybe that's where we could start and start consulting amongst ourselves. That's another, maybe that's a place that we could invite everyone if they want to come in at the working group and talk about it. Um, but, th but that's a great idea. Because there are areas that, you know, true quorum and true process, it can't be part of the general PIAT meeting. Um, so thank you. Anyone has any, in the interest of time, and it's 10.02 and everyone really needs to get to their family um, and uh, get ready for the next day. Um, I wish I'm looking forward to seeing each of you on Saturday. It will only be an in-person. We could not accommodate um, the hybrid at this time. Uh, so it's an in-person session um, from 10 to three and uh, I'm looking forward to have this discussion. Okay. Um, Zina, you have anything to say and you can do the adjournment. I was going to say, um, for time purposes, um, I know everybody has great ideas and I want to hear more of those in the future. I think we all do. Uh, thank you for bringing up all of your points this evening, all of your motions. Um, I know I seem late in the game, but happy new year. I just have to be the last person to say it possibly tonight. Um, and we do need someone to bring forward the motion to adjourn officially. Motion to adjourn. Want one. Anyone need a second there? <laughs> I'll second it too. Uh, <laughs> I'll second it. Ward two. Thank you, sir. One and, and two. <laughs> ward one and two. <laughs> one and two. <laughs> Thank you. That's teamwork. Teamwork. Zina, stand for a second. Yeah. Michelle. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Michelle, you can stand for a sec. Is that okay? Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks to everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.